Hey, we're live, aren't we? We are. I guess we are. We are. Well, welcome everyone there in Shiprock's land. And uh, thanks for joining us on this Facebook live stream, Shiprock's 101. We're going to kind of give you the ins and outs of ship rocks, not so much what goes, well, I guess some of the things that go on a boat, but basically all the, maybe the little things you have in your mind, travel, transfers, baggage, all the stuff you want to know about. And then we'll talk about things that go on on the ship, what to expect. And we're going to get it from every side because you have obviously me, I'm going to kind of guide this thing, but El Capitan will be joining us here shortly. We have the Ascort team of uh, Jen, Peggy, is Kathy somewhere lurking? I, I, I am here. Oh, there you go. I'm right here. There. They will answer and talk about all the uh, important issues as far as you guys booking, uh, everything else like that. And then we are very blessed. Thank you so much to have some ship rockers on, both survivors and a noob. So we're going to break Ooh. our noob in uh, to the ship rock family way. And um, we're just going to have a good time. So Listen, if you guys are following along, please pose your questions on the Facebook Live here and we'll try to get to those. Um, what we do not cover um, through what we're gonna go over, uh, we'll definitely get to your questions and hopefully answer those to the best we can. This will probably be the first of several of these as we get closer, but we wanted to just kind of break y'all in. I figure in a few months, we'll do Ship Rock to 102. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, without further ado, obviously, please welcome uh, Jen. Peggy and Kathy from Ask Four. Hi, girls. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Hey. Wave, you know, Kathy. Uh, <laughs> Kathy's a rarity on these things. Kathy's a rarity. Uh, Kathy, yeah. Kathy it's so rare that we shadows. get Kathy to participate in these things with us. Yeah. So, so we're, we're <laughs> very thankful to have her. And um, guys, some of our survivors, let's welcome them and say hello. Alexis, Julie, Jeremy. Is that who we got? Is that the three yeah. we have? That's Fantastic. our survivors. Yep, and then we have a noob, uh, Maya. Maya, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't thank you enough. Thank you again for becoming a part of this uh, family, and we uh, we think that you're going to have an incredible time in January. And uh, yeah, tell all of your friends times ten after you get home. But uh, let's start off by talking to some of the survivors and kind of get a little lowdown on them. Um, Alexis, you kind of want to tell us where you're from, how many years you have been a ship rocker. Um, who do you have coming with you? And finally, what are you looking forward to most? So I am Alexis. I live in Maryland and this is, will be my fourth ship rocked. Um, I come with my husband and this is actually our only trip that we get without children. So it's definitely a party and um, I'm just looking forward to getting out and getting away and not seeing my four walls and um, <laughs> reconnecting with everybody. Let me ask you something. Uh, is there going to come a point when you guys will bring the kids? No. Fantastic. I love that. that. <laughs> <laughs> this is mom and dad time, kids. Sorry. <laughs> Do your homework. <laughs> I love it. Um, Julie. Oh, Julie. Julie, Julie, Julie. Come on, Julie. For those who don't know who you are, please give us the lowdown. Where are you from, Julie? I'm from Sally Beach, Florida. All right, so you're always basically living in the sun on the beach anyway, so. Absolutely. Um, how many years have you been on, Julie? Three. Three, 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 three. Mm -hmm. um, who's coming with you? Well, my roommate was Holly, but now she's with her boyfriend. I don't know who my roommate is officially right now. <laughs> what you're saying is you're taking application. I, I just, I just, it's up in the air. <laughs> Come hell or high water, come January 21st, you're going to have someone locked in, so you'd be Absolutely. Good. And uh, what are you looking forward to most? Oh, my gosh. Lamb of God. Definitely. All right. <laughs> she had to go biblical on us, but yes, very good. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Thank you, Julie. And Jeremy, uh, my friend, uh, tell us where you're from. What is up? Um, so I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. The little podunk town no one knows of, but it's gorgeous here. So, what's your city? That. The city is Green Greenville. 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 Okay. Well, hey, come on. Greenville's Greenville's. That's not a drive-through, man. That's that's a pretty sizable place. It's pretty cool. I mean, you know. But I digress. Where? <laughs> uh, how many years you've been with us? So this will also be my fourth year. So I've been three on. Uh, Juliana mm -hmm. and Alex all all the same year. We were noobs. So 
This will be my wow, fourth. Man, that's Surprising. super cool. Uh, who's coming with? So uh, my brand new smoking hot wife, Nicole, um, who it's her birthday today, and she allowed me to be on this. Uh, well, happy birthday, Nicole. Shout out to Nicole. Nicole. Is that why you're all snazzied <laughs> up, or did you just get off work? Just off work, man. I mean, okay. you know, home office, but uh, yeah, I dress up for these meetings. So I yeah, I don't. Um, so what, uh, what are you looking forward to most? Uh, man, I mean, this lineup is just killer this year. I can't believe how you guys came through uh, on this one. So, I mean, looking forward to everybody. Wage war, especially, and uh, mm. something we have special planned for uh, Mr. Johannes of Avatar. I'm really looking forward to that as well. Fantastic. Let me ask you real quick with regards to your wife. Has she been on before? She has. Last year was her new okay. year. And then I brought um, this year will be my younger sister, Bobby Catherine's new year. So we're kind of expanding the uh, the family, the the nuclear family, I guess you would say. That is awesome. Well, well, thank you for doing that. And uh, this is how we continue to grow this thing is by people just playing telephone with people. Hey, you got to come on this thing. And Maya, welcome once again. Uh, no. Maya, where are you from? <laughs> I know where Greenville, South Carolina is at. I'm on East Tennessee um kodak which nobody knows they know where dolly parton's hometown is though oh i've totally <laughs> talked to you on the phone we had a conversation about this yes gallenberg <laughs> you know George. i'm on okay. outskirts yeah i won't ask how many years you've been on because it's your first year so uh are you bringing someone with you yes um i met a festival buddy at exit uh -huh. 111 a couple years ago and she's yeah. on board going with me so it'll be our both first years try to get wow. my kids to go with me but they looked at me like I was weird because I mean heaven forbid they miss school for a week like what kind of parent am I you know we could we have homeschooling on the boat I'm kidding of course but yeah no <laughs> <laughs> no what uh uh what do you not having been on what do you are you right now looking forward to in your mind what are you looking forward to people watching oh there's plenty of that <laughs> um from 6 a.m to well 6 a.m <laughs> so um so let me ask you this since you haven't been on what drew you to us how'd you find out about us and uh yeah you rolled the dice with us um i actually found the page through another group that i'm in, I'm in. um mm -hmm. they were for um, exit 111 and one of the guys were on there were like yeah we're going to ship rock and i'm like well what's that so i had to google it and i'm like fuck yeah <laughs> i love your enthusiasm you're already you already fit in you just you're a perfect Perfect. I love it. Anyway, listen, Maya, again, thank you so much. And uh, so that's basically uh, our, our, what do they call these things? They call a, is it a dias, dias? It's a dias. Dias? Or dias tonight. Is it a dias? dias? I watch Comedy Central Roast a lot. This is a dias. Yeah. Okay. This is our dias tonight. <laughs> so anyway, ask for survivors and a noob who's no longer a noob now that she's, she's been indoctrinated. She's been branded. So everyone, welcome. Again, sorry, uh, we had a long intro there, but I wanted to make sure that everyone had their, uh, their, uh, their moment. So guys, if you have some questions for us, please start writing us down. I'm just gonna let Jen take this and run with it and kind of go over what she wants to talk about with this. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. It's Monday night. Pull up a cocktail, you probably earned it because work was long. Thanks, Justin. Well, so um, in putting all of this kind of together, what we just really wanted to do was present all the information in one place so that newbies coming on and finding the group pages and um, you know when they call us with questions, we can kind of direct them to one area and place to watch something that's kind of entertaining and fun and we'll give them all the answers and information that they're looking for. Um, I guess we gotta say hey to the captain, Alan, anything hey. you wanna add and say? I just I feel in. underdressed, should I have worn a tie? <laughs> Jeremy's always our number one costume person outside of Jeff. So, <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with Jeremy. It's hard, Hi, Julie. Hi. Oh, hi, Alan. Alexis and Maya. Hello, hello. Hello. So Maya is our noob. I know Julie's not yes. a noob. Is Alexis a noob? Mm -hmm. No, no Alexis, Alexis is not a noob. No, I'm okay, totally sorry. Noob. <laughs> I promise you. the introductions. Everyone. I have Before everyone's you came on. faces memorized, always. 
We have a couple other noobs that were invited that may pop in um, as this goes on. Um, okay. Well, boot me out if you need space in the Brady Bunch world. We do not. Right. Everybody will fit. Everybody is accepted here. Well, welcome to the family, Maya. I'm excited you're joining us and, and uh, hopefully we'll live up to your expectations. She's thinking. Yeah. No, I'm just excited to be on board. I mean, I needed to get my festival buzz out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's not just a festival. But that's one of the great you things. Can, you know about. what, Maya, the great thing about the cruise, you can buy a lot of buckets of buzz. So, yeah, yeah you're good. You but I don't drink. <laughs> what? And that's the great thing about Chip Rock. It's not just a festival. That's it's right. Really, it's really an experience when you, uh, you know, yes, we have the music and, and we have the stages and, and that's a big part of it, obviously. And, and lineup is always a big deal for us every year. But uh, really, the community is what you'll discover is what makes this thing so amazing and, and so great. And just the, the love amongst the guests and, and, you know, the passion amongst our crew and, and what we do every year, which we feed off of you. So, I mean, it, it, you know, were it not for, for our guest community, it wouldn't be what it is for sure. I think this is the first festival I've actually am going to go to that has somebody coming with me. Normally, I hit up festivals by myself. I'll oh, go nice. camping by myself and just go meet people. And that's how you make friends. Well, you, you guys will make a ton of friends within, I mean, before you even get on the ship, you'll, the line to get on board, you'll, you'll meet all kinds of people <laughs> and, and get to know all kinds of people before even, even the pre-party or at the hotel or, uh, you know, it's just because you'll, you'll find each other, you'll see each other and, and, uh, you're all there for the same reason. You're all in the same boat. And, uh, and, and that's one of the great things about this community is that, you know, people will seek you out too. I mean, it, it, it really is an amazing group of people that all love to be there and they love to take, you know, first time guests under their wings and, uh, and really show them the ropes. And, and um, like I said, that's just it, the community of guests is, is really just the, the real true star of this whole thing. I'm just, excited with, the, I'm just excited with the fact that I don't have to worry about food. Cause every time I show up with two festivals, I've, Forgot, I forget to bring food. One year, I showed up with like three bags of ramen to last me four days. <laughs> no, yeah. you won't have you won't have to worry about ramen. No. Wait, wait, did you did you bring a stove and a boiling pot of water to go? How did you do that? So did you I eat did, it dry? I even had a imitation crab. I had shrimp. I had sliced beef. I had cilantro. Like it was a whole hot pot going on. Wow. No, you won't have to do that here. We've got, do that. <laughs> We've got barbecue. There's a steakhouse. There's sushi. There's fine dining in the restaurant. There's, you know, buffet. There's, what else? Mongolian oh, walk. Right. There's a, yeah. I, ice burgers. Ice cream. Tacos. Burgers. Mexican food. There's all kinds of great stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That soft serve machine is going to take a pounding. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I don't know what the, you know, by the time January rolls around, we'll, we'll see how the soft serve thing is going to work. It may be served to you this year, but. That's okay. We'll, uh, yeah. As long as I can get some. <laughs> Who cares, right? I don't yeah. care how as it's delivered. As long as it's pouring. Jen, 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 you, only, you, only, you only get six at a time, Jen, so relax. <laughs> a cone a day. That's the uh, maybe two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, um, well, I guess let's just start by introducing, um, we have Kathy, Pecky, and myself on that are part of the reservations team, and Heather, who's in the background, um, who's going to be posting links um, to the different pages if you follow along on this, um, so that you can find them easy. We want to provide you the resources that you need um, to be successful and turn from a noob into a survivor. So, um, I'm Jennifer. I do our operations and logistics planning, as well as help with back end on reservations. I'm not nearly as active on the phones as Kathy and Peggy are, but I do love getting the random phone calls that from each right of here. you um, <laughs> that come in. Like Maya, she really nailed me with some good ones the other day. And I was like, you're coming on our broadcast. <laughs> and so, I'm like, what did I ask? I don't even remember. Once we got off the phone, it just went out. <laughs> I remember what you asked. So don't worry. We'll, we'll get over it. We'll get around to it. Definitely some hotel stuff, which is um, my area. So um, we'll cover all of that. And then, um, Kathy, go for it. Tell us about you. Sorry, I had to unmute. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Kathy. I am the VP of Guest Services. Um, I 
um, just work closely with Peggy as far as just answering calls and um, emails and just making sure that all your questions are answered and making sure your cabins are booked and where you're supposed to be and that your cabin mates are paid and pretty much anything that you need to know um, when you call us, you're either gonna get myself or Peggy or Jen. And we're really excited to have you guys on board with us again. It's been a long year. Um, and just, I know everybody is just so ready to get back to cruising again. So we got a lot of exciting things coming up, a great lineup and just excited to get going again. We get to go. <laughs> oh. that's, what they, that's what they tell us. It's an inside joke. I'll, I'll let everybody know. So it's an inside joke because there's, there's two questions that strangely all of us get asked every time we explain to people what we do. Number one is, do you get to go? And number two is, is that all you do? <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> Miss Peggy, who always gets a crowd chant and cheer on the first day, <laughs> always. Uh, yeah. Please, Peggy, tell us about you. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. So this will be my fourth ship rocked. So going on five years with the company. Loved every minute of it. Um, Kathy did a great um, introduction to exactly what we do, and <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're we're there for emails, phone calls. Um, customer service issues if you are having trouble with something you just need to talk things through I think we even have a couple of guests that just call to chat I mean that's that's what we're here for so I've, I've done it what are you doing <laughs> what's, what's going on, on? <laughs> I haven't talked to you in a while yeah, yeah. Yeah. Peggy also has a fantastic phone voice and I I'm not surprised if people aren't like what are you wearing <laughs> I used to get that a lot when I worked for Disney. Not so much with Shiprock, which is kind of weird <laughs> that the two of them are, are shocking. So, <laughs> switched. But yeah. Did you ever dress up like a princess? No. <laughs> I, and now that I think about it, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jeremy, don't worry. We're going to segue into your photos that you sent me of your, oh, no, you don't have of your costumes. That. Oh, so yeah. guys, um, I guess we should just run down the main facts of the cruise. Um, so I'll start with like the most fundamental. This will be our 12th sailing, correct, Alan? Yes. We did 11 in 2020. Last year was supposed to be 12. This would have been 13, but that's good. We don't talk about last year. Next year. Last year does, doesn't exist. exist. Yep. Doesn't exist. F um, we are sailing January 22nd to 27th of 2022 out of Galveston, Texas on a five night cruise going to Costa Maya and Cozumel, Mexico. Um, Heather will be posting the link in there of the destinations. All of the website links that we're gonna put on here can pretty much be found on the shiprock.com website. Um, there's a wealth of information there, including the FAQ page that we'll discuss later. Um, all of the destinations, home port, parking directions, everything that you need to know can legitimately be found on our website with minimal effort. Um, and a lot of hard work and time has been put in to make sure that that is accurate and correct and, and exactly uh, functional the way that we all would expect from um, the information that you're seeking for your vacation. Um, we are sailing on the Carnival Breeze, uh, which actually will be one of the first ships for Carnival put back into service. Um, they are starting their first cruise July 15th, um, as was announced this last week. Cookie uh, will be our cruise director on board. As far as we know. As, as far, far as, as we, we know. As far as we know. He's already there. He's, He's already there. born out of his mind. And um, <laughs> if you want to follow somebody very entertaining on social media, I would suggest you look for Cookie. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we're excited that that ship is going to be back in service and up and running for quite a few months before it becomes ours. Um, we'll let them work out the kinks and get the staff in order. And, um, I know that's something that's, yeah, broken in. That's something that's always a big concern. I think of, of ours is staff turnover from who we meet and what we do. So for those who don't know, most cruises will nor all normal cruises have a cruise director and he's sort of the main guest interfacing person and for a couple of years two years we didn't have them in 20 out of new orleans do we or did we we had one but it wasn't like a regular one it wasn't on in out of new orleans though 
So anyway, Cookie is a, an employee of Carnival and he's a cruise director for a lot of ships and they've assigned him to the breeze. And as far as we know, he will be our cruise director and he's a lot of fun. He helps us host events and makes announcements and, and uh, he's a super guy and we're, we're very excited to have him. And as far as the breeze goes, I think this is the first year in the breeze. And so our, our guests will be, you know, all those who've, who've been on with us in the last number of years, um, this will be a new ship to everybody, but it's a fantastic ship and it's uh it's laid out pretty close to to what the prior carnival ships have have been um the promenade's a little different in the way that it sort of routes through the middle of the ship as opposed to the side um theater's the same deck space is a little different in that it doesn't have a little amphitheater uh, kind of vibe like the last ones have this one is a really three stories um kind of a big hole hot tubs. huh does it have more hot tubs? I think so. Yes, <laughs> I think it does. Actually, actually, the ship itself does Question for sure. Doesn't matter. The ship itself. <laughs> the ship itself does for sure. In fact, on the promenade level, there's two exits outside the side of the ship where there are hot tubs on either side. Um, really cool. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that 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 whole promenade area on that ship is really cool, and I think everybody's going to dig it. Um, but the deck stage itself is sort of sunken down in. Uh, surrounded but they, I will tell you having been on the sister ship um, there's really not a bad there's no bad views anywhere on the deck from the floor or from either of the two levels above it um, all the way around um, we've got an amazing stage plan for this year or next year um, it's hard for us to remember what year it is <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah the promenade is amazing um where I think a lot of guests are going to be super happy is that the casino stage is not actually in the casino. It's kind of tucked around behind in an area called Ocean Plaza, which is right near um, Red Frog and Alchemy and um, I think the coffee bar is there too, but it's, it's a great space. And um, so we'll, we'll, we'll be utilizing that stage a lot more this time, I think. Um, then we had the, the casino was kind of a late night thing, but we'll, we'll probably utilize that stage in, in different ways throughout the course of the cruise. But other than that, it's, you know, the aft lounge is a little different. It's a little bigger. It's a little nicer um, for that stage. Um, and of course, this ship has some amazing cabin categories that we haven't had in the past, like the cove balconies. So if you're booked in a cove balcony, those are lower on the ship, but they're all the way around the sides on, on either side. And, and um, they're great. I, I stayed in one. They're great. Um, I like them. Yeah. I think they feel yeah. cozier and more private. They kind of do. And they're cooler because they're kind of lower. So you get a balcony, you get a balcony vibe with the ocean a little closer to you. You're not, you're not as high up, but, um, and I don't know if those are sold out. I'm just thinking talking about them. Are they sold out? Kathy? I can't remember. They might be, but, um, the, uh, and then there's a cloud nine category of cabins on the ship this year too, um, which are all cabins that are up and in, in, in around the spa and they're a little bit nicer and come with different amenities. And um, so I, I think our guests are really gonna dig uh, the breeze. Gonna be really good. Yeah. Hey, real quick before you start with a question and it's, it's, you can do a quick answer. Uh, Stephanie uh, want to know why we switched from the magic to the breeze. Okay, well, that has to do with the way things played out uh, over the course of the year that we don't talk about. So we were contracted to sail on the Magic, and we, when it, when it became known that we weren't going to be able to sail uh, when we thought we were going to, we, we bumped it um, from January to May, I think. Uh, again, still on the Magic. Um, but unfortunately, when it became known that we weren't going to be able to sail out of um, Miami on the Magic in May, we had to shift back to Galveston. And I know a lot of people were kind of bummed about that. And I promise you, we were, um, we like Galveston. We think we caught a cold year that year. I, th I think Galveston's going to be a great port. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we, we would have loved to have been back out of, out of Florida again, but the way these things work and the way you contract ships, the magic typically does not do five day sailings, uh, or at least for that year. And the only way to get a five day sailing is to either, take a longer sailing and split it up or if there if it was doing shorter sailings to combine sailings um the logistics and cost um to be able to stay on the magic um would have been prohibitive so you know we we shifted back to galveston on the breeze which is the sister ship it's the exact same ship just different colors and 
lounge names, but um, um, we'll, uh, we're, we, were, we were a little bummed we couldn't stay on the magic out of Florida, but it, it really would not have been possible. I mean, the, there would have been a substantial price increase, which would have caused us to have to raise prices um, to stay on the magic out of Florida. We just weren't going to do that to you guys. Um, you know, we're bummed that we couldn't go out of Florida, but I promise you, we will be back out of Florida, uh, very soon. I'll just say it. We're going out of Florida in 23. We have, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I've already, contra yeah. I've already contracted the ship. I just okay, can't. Well, there can't we go, secret. But, thanks, um, for, thanks for watching tonight, guys. Have a great night. <laughs> That's everything you need to know. Bye. <laughs> I'm drinking. I may say more later. I don't know. Everything you came here for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we just, it was just too, it, it was too costly uh, to be able to stay on that ship. Um, so there's your answer. It was, All we right. would have had to raise prices and we didn't want to do that. So there you go. So basically, Stephanie, this is to yours and everyone's benefit. So thanks for asking the question. Thanks. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> Alan, can we uh, go over the dirty topic first that's like first and foremost in a lot of people's minds uh, that we've addressed several times, but I think like, let's just answer it all and get it out of the way. Vaccinations, masks, Al, Al McManus is married. I'm sorry. He is, happily, <laughs> true. happily. It's true. That guy it's lucked true. out. That guy really lucked out. He did. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, his wife is above him. I think he would. I think he would. Oh, agree. but he's great. Um, no, Al's awesome. So we, uh, the the answer is we don't have an answer as of right now. Um, everything is very fluid, um, and much like it has been for the past year and a half, um, we just don't know yet what is going to be required um, because the CDC and their infinite governor or, or um, uh, uh, government wisdom uh, have not really laid out a, good, a really great plan for in the future. They've, they've started to finally work with the cruise lines to get them up and running now, um, which they're going to do, thankfully, in July. Um, the other complication, of course, is that the, the two states where the two biggest ports are, uh, Florida and Texas, um, each have laws that deal with you know, companies and requiring the vaccinations and that sort of thing. So I, I think a lot of that has got to get sorted out first. Um, I'm not going to make a guess as to whether or not vaccinations are going to be required by the time we sail in January, because it would, it, that's all it would be. Um, you know, obviously if, and when we learn that um, vaccinations would be required, we would let everybody know as early as possible. Um, and of course we have uh you know, if for whatever reason that it is announced that, that the vaccinations will be required, we do have systems in place that will allow you to request for a refund if you just can't get one um, or don't want to for some reason. Um, I look personally, I look at vaccines. I'm not anti-vax. I haven't gotten it personally um, just because I haven't really felt the need to rush out and get it, but um, I'm not opposed to it. I'll absolutely get one if, if I need to to get on a ship. But I totally understand if, if certain people don't want to or can't for some reason, um, that's fine. So if you go to the website, um, I don't remember the address. There will post the link. Yeah, it's uh, the, right at the very top of every page on the website is our health and safety link. And for those who want to just hear it, it's shiprocked.com slash health hyphen and hyphen safety. So, but at the top of every page, it says health and safety. If you click on that, you can read through everything uh, that we know as of now, uh, in addition to our policy with regards to uh, refunds, when and if vaccinations are required. Um, you know, again, I don't know if they will be, I'm not gonna guess one way or the other because I don't even think the cruise lines know. Um, they're still sorting everything out with the CDC now, but, um, we, we probably won't know anything until later in the year. You know, I'm hoping we find out sooner than later, but my guess is the way things have been going, it may be end of summer, early fall before we really know. And if, Alan, if they do require it, are you thinking that it might just be the, the you know, showing the proof of the car, like some places are now, like we're just in Chicago or no idea? No idea. Okay. I mean, I know there's this big push to try to put together like vaccine passports and all that kind of stuff. And I don't, I'm not going to venture a guess as to what is going to happen. 
Um, sure. You know, I, I, I wouldn't, if you had asked me to guess that all of this stuff over the last year and a half would have happened, no, I wouldn't have been wrong. Uh, yeah. In fact, I was wrong because we, you know, I rolled the dice a little bit. And when we shifted our crews from January to May, thinking, oh, we'll, we'll be good passes. We'll, we'll be able to sail in May. But sure enough. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not going to venture a guess. I'm, I'm hopeful that, uh, that we're at a place uh, that resembles a little bit more of normal or pre-COVID normal. But uh, I don't know. Cool. You know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm waiting to find out just like everybody else is so we can let you guys know. Well, that's what we know. That's it. Yeah. Well, so anytime you email is... us or send us questions or call us about this, you're going to get the exact same response. Whatever's released yeah, but news to, discussed right to be now. Clear, to be clear on the refund policy, when and if they announce that vaccines will be required for our sailing in January, there will be a period of time where you can request a refund, much like our lineup guarantee. There will be an announced date that vaccines are required. There will be a window of time that you can request uh, to cancel the cruise for a refund if you just don't want to take it or can't for medical reasons or whatever. Um, we, we, we do have a policy in place, place and you can read that information on the website, but, um, you know, I, right now, no idea. Wish I knew. Hey, uh, hey guys, uh, people out there, uh, if you guys are following along, some of your questions regarding, uh, bands and performances, uh, those are things that are come programming will come at a later date. So just keep that in mind for the night. Yeah. This we're already really working on it. We're already working yeah. on it. I mean, it's. Schedule won't come until a little bit closer to the cruise, but or a little bit later in the year. But we'll, yeah. uh, you know, we've we've already started working on on schedules, well, and we'll do our best. We'll do our best. We know we have a big lineup this year, um, and and a lot of great bands that we know a lot of different people want to see. And I've already seen a lot of posts of people, you know, worried that <laughs> they're going to have to miss certain shows or running around the ship. And I think what you'll find is it'll be just like every other year where. You know, you'll have your list of must sees and we'll we'll schedule it in such a way that allows you to hopefully see everybody twice if you want. Um, and of course, we'll schedule it like we typically do also to give you a little bit of downtime and time to eat and time to hang out with each other. And and that's a big part of what we, you know, we say rock hard vacation harder for a reason. And, you know, we want that vacation aspect to, to always be there for you guys, even if it means you're, you know, maybe you just decide you're going to skip a show and, and go to the spa or, you um, you know, do something with your friends, but we, we want to try to provide those sort of <clears throat> pads of, of time for you to enjoy each other and enjoy your vacation. Hey, Alan, would that programming involve also the pre-party festivities? That's coming yeah, up we, next, Justin. Yeah. We, okay. Uh, okay. Just, there's been several <laughs> questions. I just want to throw that in. I didn't. Well, I will have a pre-party. We haven't planned it yet. I don't have any information you. on it yet, but um, there will be some form of pre-party in Galveston. Okay. The bar crawl was amazing a couple of years yeah, back. Yeah, we, we enjoyed the bar crawl. We didn't know what to think about it initially, but uh, we worked with Bar Crawl Nation on that, and, and they really helped us put together what we thought was a pretty cool little event. So I don't know if we're going to do that again or not. We're, we're still sort of discussing everything. But, Alan, it's safe to say from a hotel perspective that we're requesting the guests to get down to Gabbleston the night before. wherever Whatever we end up planning will be in Gabbleston, not Houston, not, you know, wherever. Oh, as of right now, all of our plans are, are based in Galveston. And like every cruise, we always recommend that everyone get to our departure port um, the day before, um, just because we don't want anybody missing the ship. If the flight is late or if there's some travel difficulty, it's always better, we think, to arrive in our departure city uh, the night before the cruise or the day before the cruise. Um, you know, if you can, more than that, just so you can enjoy the area. But um, our, our recommendation is always the day before. And then on your, in addition to that, when we leave the day of departure on the 27th to not book your flights before like one, um, yeah. because you have yeah. to remember Galveston is about a 45 minute drive to the Houston hobby airport and about an hour yeah. and Here, 15 minutes you. up to, to Houston airport. When, so, I'll tell you, I'm going to read this directly from the website. When, <laughs> you're posting the links. <laughs> when booking your return flight, Carnival recommends scheduling your departure for after 1.30 p.m. Central. So arriving, um, if you have to arrive on the day of departure for some reason, um, 
you should try to schedule your arrival at Bush International, which is IAH, by no later than noon, and at Hobby, uh, which is HOU, uh, no later than 1230. But if you get there the day before, then you don't have any problems. I think a good point to recommend, particularly about getting back into Galveston, um, if you don't mind, is a lot of our ship rockers had issues with how expensive it was to get back to the airport the day that we came back into the port. Um, so if you are banking on using a Lyft or an Uber, um, their surge rates increased greatly um, because they have a captive audience. Um, you know, you're not going anywhere, like you, you have to use them. Um, so I either recommend that later on to this year when you have the chance to book your travel back to the airport via carnival yep. or schedule a car service or something ahead of time um, get together with some other ship rockers and we'll I think go into that a little bit later um, of connecting with others and, and how you can make this a little bit better for you because uh, quite a few people were very shocked <laughs> and uh, yeah it was a lot of money to get some people back to the carnival airport. offers shuttle service from uh, the Galveston Port of Galveston back to the airport to both airports um, if you go to the travel page of our website and click on the uh, or the travel section and click on Port of Galveston, all of the Carnival shuttle information is there, um, and you can uh, you can actually book that through your um, your online account with Carnival. When you get your booking number later in the year, well, you can log in and, and uh, create your shuttle transfers. But yeah, that's a good that's a good point, Peggy, because <clears throat> it can get a little pricey if you're in an Uber by yourself. You know, ride sharing uh, with others, or or you know, finding a local shuttle shuttle service, or booking Carnival's uh, transfer services is, is really the best way to go about it. And just a reminder too, there really is only one car rental. Um, last I checked on the island, still, which is Enterprise. Um, so that's also a little bit challenging um, for that option for rental cars uh, as well. So just remember to keep that in mind. Um, when I spoke with my hotel contacts, they still due to COVID and hiring issues and everything like we're seeing across the country with all kinds of employers. Um, they have not brought back a lot of their shuttle services around the island um, into service yet. But again, we are hoping that by the time January comes around, that's something that's um, available again through the hotels that you're booking um, to have at least inner island um, travel so that you have like shuttles and stuff to get downtown or but there was a plethora of Ubers for in-town stuff, but the stuff back to the airport um, was definitely at the chart, the, the surge rates. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, while we're on the topic, if you're driving in, um, there is parking um, in and around the Port of Galveston. Um, and I think, is Galveston the one where you can pull up and drop your stuff and then go park? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you're, if you're driving in for some reason, um, there is on-site parking. Um, and I believe that you can actually pull up and drop bags and people and then go park. And there's a, um, is that the one where there's a little shuttle that brings you back? I think so. But anyway, again, same thing, Port of Galveston page on our website, there's information and links all about parking as well as driving directions to and from the port. But if you stay in Galveston the night before and participate in our pre-party and you got all kinds of time and it'll be a very relaxing boarding day. You want to do People that. Make it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, in Steve's point, you want to do that. That's, that's a big reason we recommend it because the first day of getting on a ship, especially for noobs, Maya, it's a little daunting because you're, you're think of it this way. You're loading, you know, 4,000 people on an airplane over the course of a few hours. And so, you know, there's some lines and there's some security and there's a little bit of waiting and uh, it, it can, it, you know, unfortunately it's the only way to do it, but. Don't uh, they have a designated check-in time? Cause I know I've cruised before and they, when they send you the email, you can pick the time you check in and then you yeah, go in at that time. It's still they, not as bad. They do for- Isn't tip Maya an amazing noob? I know, it's a great question. <laughs> oh, I love her. So. <laughs> I mean, the answer is yes. Typically on a normal cruise, Maya, you would select a check-in time. And the way, and what they do is they, they do that to stagger, you know, the crowd, basically. They, they want to make sure that, that they're not trying to load everybody in all at the same time. Um, we, 
we find that on charters, even though when you check in, you will, you will be asked to pick a check-in time. Um, we, we find that none of our guests pay attention to the times ever. <laughs> and, they, and many of them will show up hours in advance of when the first check-in time is. So really, it's, you can, you'll select a check-in time when you check in for the cruise later. But the reality is people don't pay attention to that. So there, there ends up just being lines. We typically tell people to arrive, where is it? That's on the website too. Isn't it like noon, 10 or noon? <laughs> I want to get there at eight. The party yeah. starts at 8 a.m. Check in for the cruise. You haven't Check gone to sleep. Yeah. So this is on our website page also. Uh, our website <laughs> under, the, under the travel section, uh, under flights. Uh, check in for the cruise will begin around noon and all guests must be on the ship by no later than three. Uh, we set sail at 3.30. I will tell you this, our recommendation, although it says noon, if you came at 1, 1 1.30, the line will have well died down. You'll walk right onto the ship. Of course, now I say that and everybody's going to wait and show up later. But, um, <laughs> but the truth is, if you, if you get there early, you're going to be standing around and waiting. Um, you know, the best thing to do really is to arrive around noon um, and, and not come at 9 or 9.30 when a, lot, when a lot of our guests start showing up anyway. But um, and to note, your cabins aren't even ready until later. Yeah, that's on the, the thing. They 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 have to turn over the cabins from prior sailing. Um, you know, we have to make sure that that all of our uh, production uh, is situated in such a way that it doesn't create any safety hazards for people in and around the ship. We've always got crew guys moving gear through the hallways and the elevators, and you know, the prior right. ship has to get all the luggage off and get our luggage on. So there's a, there's a logistical madness that's happening in those first few hours before we actually open the doors. Um, all of so our that's planes, my, all of our branding, yeah. all of our we, banners. That, I, I like to make the ship look nice before guests get on. So yeah. you know, we, may, we, may, we have actually in the past delayed boarding uh, a couple of times, I think, just to make sure that we have everything ready because we, it's oh, like, it's like Disneyland. I mean, we want, or Disney World, we want you to walk in there and it's your ship the minute you step on 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 board. We don't want you to feel like we're scrambling to, to hang up posters and things like that to make it, you know, we want, we want you guys to feel like it's your world the minute you step on board. And, and so, you know, we want to make sure we're ready to receive you. But the truth is, it's really just mostly a lot of logistics of getting the people off, getting the new luggage on, getting all of our stuff on and getting it ready. Um, so we say come at noon, but smart cruisers they come about 1 1 30 at two o'clock even you know they may miss an hour of extra time with their friends at a bar or something but the <laughs> ease of the ease of getting on the ship at that point is you just you'll literally get out of the car walk right through the terminal and get on the ship you won't have to yeah, wait i'm staying at a tremont which is next to the port so i just walked next door yeah. <laughs> so i mean that's the thing so if you, if you wait until one o'clock 1 30 you'll walk and walk right on the ship we have some really amazing ship rockers posting some uh, very smart comments about staying the night after. That way you can just either walk or get a quick Uber over to your hotel and recover for the night. Yeah. Um, we have a Hannah Owens who's saying she's driving and she's gonna offer people some rides. Awesome, that's the rocker way. That's the other thing, there is, a, there is a ride share group on Facebook. There is yep. a, uh, there's a ship rock guest ride shares and travel group where a lot of guests will coordinate with each other uh, to share shuttles or share car service or, or share vans so that it makes it a lot easier and, and more economical for everybody. Hey, Alan, do you, I'm gonna Go throw this in there. Alan, do you plan on having a uh, merch online prior to the cruise so people can order that before? To the, the extent we are able to get merch done and produced and ready to have online, maybe. Um, I will tell you, we did a couple of, we did a ship delivery, I think one or two years. Um, it was challenging. Um, and I'll just back up a little bit. So last year we didn't have March the first day. Uh, and the reason we didn't have March the first day is because we can't sell. We were prohibited from selling merchandise while the ship was still in the Mississippi river. So we couldn't actually open the store until 
we exited the river, which was going to be the middle of the night. I think it was 12, 31 o'clock in the morning or something by the time we actually got out. So we didn't open up the merch store the first day. Galveston's a little different. We will be able to open up the merch store. It probably won't open up until eight ish um, that first night. Um, but anyway, back to the question, if we can get it done and online and figure out a ship, a good, you know, pick up on the ship system, we will. Um, that was really challenging the year we did it just because of the limited amount of time that we have. The other mm -hmm. part of the problem is sometimes we run into issues with customs and stevedores and getting our, our merchandise delivered to the ship. We always try to load everything. A lot of people don't know this. We always try to load a lot of our stuff on the sailing prior. So a lot of our production equipment, a lot of our, our stuff, merchandise, we do our best to actually load that onto the cruise before hours so that we don't have any issues getting stuff loaded on the morning of our sailing. Um, however, there have been times when we've had we, one year, I forget when it was, 16? 16, I think. We were sitting there on the side of the ship looking at all of our merchandise sitting on the dock <laughs> we were, as, as the stevedores were taking a break or something. And uh, so it took us forever to get all that stuff loaded onto the ship. By the time it gets loaded on the ship and delivered where it needs to go and unpacked and all that, um, it, it's time consuming. Um, you know, and I wish we had 50 people to help unpack merch and get it all ready and sorted and packed for, for uh, pickup. But we'll, if, if possible, we will, uh, we'll, we'll have merch available online. Um, but we also have a little bit of a different plan for it this year too. Yes with the different layout of the ship. So we will be easing some of those lines. There's gonna be a separate um, VIP um, option that comes with their package so that that will alleviate some more congestion. Right. Um, so there's a lot of changes that we have taken into consideration and are um, adjusting. Now we, we heard every bit of um, the commentary after last year's cruise. And again, a huge chunk of that had to do with the fact that we couldn't open the store the first night. Right. Um, and so we, everybody lined up the next morning and it was just an ungodly line. And trust me, I hate lines. I don't want anybody to have to wait in line for anything during their cruise. It's a waste of your time. And, and it's not, you're not having fun when you're waiting in a line. Again, my, the reason I'm saying wait to come later, <laughs> you don't wait in line, but, um, look, there's gotta be some lines for merch. There's gotta be some lines for, for meet and greets. It's just unavoidable. We're going to do everything we can to try to minimize that. Um, to make that experience a little less painful for you guys uh, and for us, because we, you know, it, it's, it was a challenge last year, not being able to sell merch the first day. It really hurt us in terms of um, making it easier for you all during the course of the cruise. Um, but we've talked a lot about that and we are, we're going to do some different stuff with merch this time. We may even have multiple locations um, as opposed to just one. But uh, if, if we can figure out a way to effectively, uh, get stuff online early to where people can pick it up once they get it on the ship. We will. Um, if that option is not available, we are, we are doing everything we can to make the merchandise store experience a whole lot better this year. Well, I know right, you guys maybe. have an app for the music. So if you're not able to do the um, store online ahead of time, wouldn't you be able to put like a quick map of where the merchandise boost would be at if you do multiple well, the, Yeah, that'll be on the app. I mean, it, it, I don't know if it'll have a ship map per se, but we always do have the merch store location on our app as well as signage throughout the ship. When you, when you get there- You can't you, miss it. Yeah, in every elevator, there's, a, there's a, a map, or not a map, but a list of all of the venues, all the restaurants, all the uh, where the merch store is, where the guest services is. There's a, there's a list of where everything is. Um, Some of us don't read you know, though. Well, you can't miss a it. Lot a lot of you don't read. It, you know, <laughs> much, no one reads. That's not just true of Shiprock. I've discovered it's just people. That's everybody. <laughs> but um, you won't be able to miss it, Maya. When you get into an, any elevator on the ship, you're going to see a list of everything and where it is and the hours and everything else. So hopefully it'll be easier for you. But um, we've, in the future, not in 22, but in the future, um, we're, we're going to maybe hopefully try to improve upon the app with regards to, you know, maybe you can purchase via the app and pick it up in the store or something, but that's a lot of stuff that we got to get figured out still. But for now, um, we're going to do everything we can to try to make that March experience on the ship a lot less time consuming and, and frustrating. 
I, I mean, it's a good problem for us to have. I guess we know that that many of you want to buy merch, and and we increase the volume every year in terms of what we're selling, uh, so that we try, you know, that hopefully we don't run out of things um, on the ship. It's it's also challenging. Remember, everything that we're selling on the ship, we have to load on the ship, and that's you know, there's a limited amount of storage space sometimes. Um, so if we have, you know, you talk about sweatshirts and beach towels and stuff like that, those things take up a lot of space. And, uh, so, you know, we, we have to try to find the balance between what do we think we're going to sell versus what do we think we're going to have to reorder after the cruise? Cause you know, as much as we wish we could load three times as much as we need on the ship, um, it's just, it's just hard and not possible, but anyway, rambling. So, um, what we'll do, we'll, we're merge is a big, a big thing for us this year to get, to get, uh, to get done better. Yes. On the ladies tank tops. It's happening. I'm, sorry, I'm not looking at the comments, but I'm sure. There's was, a that Karen was that Karen? Was that Karen? No, it's Dawn. Oh, Mills. okay. Karen always asked about the tank tops. That's why I wondered if it was Karen. I, I like them too. <laughs> Dawn too. All right. Moving on. We did um, previously when we announced our initial lineup, um, a whole live segment with Alan and our team, um, how excited we were about the lineup and who was on it and what was happening. So we don't want to spend a lot of time on this tonight, um, but I do want to just go through our panel of invited guests and see who you're most excited about seeing, hear about the additions that we added, the stowaways lineup and your thoughts on it, um, and just get that excitement going around that. Jeremy? Oh, wow. I'm first. Woo You're just well, on the right of my screen. Don't. Yeah. Tie. <laughs> so number one, I don't think anybody expected Lamb of God. I mean, that is absolutely insane and amazing. And ever, I, I, if you're not excited for Lamb of God, I don't understand, but whatever. Who I'm most excited about is seeing he is legend back again. I love those guys to death. They are one of the most talented groups I've ever seen. Um, and, you know, one of the smaller bands, I'm kind of one of the smaller band kind of guys, Wage War is going to be sick. Uh, and, and just, they'll probably break the roof down if they're on the deck again, like Papa Roach we don't did. Break, we don't break roofs on ships, Jeremy. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> and then, don't YouTube that. Yeah, don't YouTube that. <laughs> don't YouTube so there's that. no video. That wasn't us. And then uh, Spirit Box is is uh, my my uh, number four, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just an amazing lineup. I can't say enough. Thank you to everybody who had a part in booking that. You, uh, Alan, and the whole ass four team. But uh, it's going to be sick. Uh, it's probably, if not the best, one of the best lineups I've seen from Shiprock or any festival. Thanks. Thanks. Well, we have two. We have two two people on our team between Roger and Danny that really put everything together between the lineup and the stowaways. And and I, I mean, you know, this is our twelfth sailing, and I, I say this every every lineup is my favorite lineup. This one's no different. It's my favorite lineup. And um, but I, I will. I'm really proud of of the just incredible diversity that we have in the lineup this year. But you know, musically speaking, uh, and otherwise for that matter. But um, there's there's a little something for everybody in there and and that's one of the things that we really work hard to try to do is you know have a you mentioned lamb of god i mean we've probably not had a headliner that heavy i guess but um but you know i mean it's a, a rock and hard rock and hard alternative i don't i don't care i'm not beholden to genre or generation at the end of the day when we do these things and and we just want to keep it fresh alexis who are you looking most forward to I'm actually really looking forward to seeing Ashes to New. Um, I really like them. I prevail, obviously. Um, but I'm also low-key looking forward to seeing Steel Panther. <laughs> Just with like the shenanigans portion of it. You know, latex is always in style. <laughs> it's a great show. I mean, look, a again, show back... Whether you're looking at the stage or at the people in the audience. So right. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing to to Jeremy's point and to yours, it's a great live show. And I don't, I mean, there've been bands I haven't booked purposely because they're not great live. And, and one of the things we really try to do is make sure that the bands that we book are, are great live performers. And obviously Steel Panther puts on a hell of a show. So we're, we're super excited to finally get them on board. Captain, Captain Julie. Julie. <laughs> Captain Julie is 
incredibly stoked to have her first year with Avatar. Ah, that's right. Oh. You were after that, weren't you? Oh, yes. Yes. I believe that was one of my um, survey responses. Oh. Um, wage War, awesome. They're Florida boys. Definitely bring it all day, every day. Haven't seen them yet, so I'm super, super stoked. And all our Shiprock favorites, Nonpoint, Seven Dust. Love Motionless and White. Super stoked they're back. Um, I'm going to interview Bad Flower in a, uh, in a couple of weeks with my buddy in PA, a Shiprocker buddy I met through Shiprock Singles page. So that's amazing. I just want to touch on the stowaways. I could not be happier that we got Nita Strauss. Yeah. Dude, that is. She's, a bit, she's sick. She's great. Our stuff, Danny, Danny worked really hard on the stowaways this year and, and got us some amazing artists between Nita and Phil X and, oh my God, HR from Bad Brains for crying out loud. I mean, I don't even know some yeah. of these people, but he blew just, my mind. Justin, <laughs> Justin about had a coronary when, when I told him HR was on. Right. But, um, old, old school. Love it. Oh, Fucking great. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited yeah. about HR. Yeah. yeah but, um, yeah, we, you know, again, Dan, one of one of the things that I try to do with our lineup every year is to keep it fresh. We try to, you know, we're about 50-50 on new bands or first-time performers and people that have played before. And that sort of mirrors our guest count. I mean, it's usually about 50-50 first-time guests and and survivors. And, and um, you know, Danny really wanted to, to mix things up a little bit this year with Stowaways too. So very, very cool. And there'll probably be a few others that will pop in, you know, between now and then. We'll see. Uh, um, Leo, also Leo. Hell yes. Yeah. So, no, I can't wait to see what we're going to work with him on this year. We have to do another thing. Because we have yeah, Cookie, hopefully, and him. So there has to be like another album. Yeah, Leo, Leo tends to come on board and film something. So I don't know. We'll see what he's going to do. I but. know. We need another Al McManus Leo uh, Cookie production, please. Ugh. Awesome. Bring it. That was awesome. That's Bring my staff my, request. Let's hear from our nude. <laughs> Let's hear from our new Maya. Who are you excited to see? I'm really bad with band names. I really am. I just like listening to good music. But honestly, I've seen Avatar in Knoxville, well, I think five years ago, and it threw on a phenomenal performance. I've seen Ashes to New. I can't wait to see them again. I prevail. I mean, 10 years is from Knoxville, so I'm going to go support them. Otherwise, I mean, I'm excited for Lamb of God, but I really did fangirl a little bit over Avatar. Well, that's good. <laughs> That's all right. Fangirling yeah. and fanboying over our bands is fine as long as you respect them. <laughs> oh yeah, I did notice yeah. though. I did the um the Spotify for Shiprocker 2022, mm -hmm. and I was like, I actually know that song for some of the other bands. I was like, okay. Yeah. If you listen to Octane, you'll know almost all of them. Mm -hmm. All right, Peggy. I would love to segue into theme nights. And oh, Jeremy got up. Damn it! I'm <laughs> gonna segue. Oh, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> theme. What? Here's I. Here's what happened. So I had asked three newbies to join us. Maya being one. Another one is Brianna, who um is wants to be really active with getting her fitness on um on the ship, and then Uberto, who's bringing his two children, wife and sister-in-law on the cruise. And so they had some like children related questions that maybe we can hit on later. But the reason that I brought Jeremy on is to talk about theme nights, because I don't know other than Jeff Angler, who's like, you know, ship rock legend. I don't know another guest that I think in life and every other event that he goes to that I've noticed as, as many costumes as Jeremy. But Peggy, if you can do an overview of our theme nights, I'm going to switch to um screen share and share some of the photos of Jeremy's um shenanigans and these are all kind of random aren't they they aren't all ship rock right Jeremy uh there's a few that are like festivals but um uh, most of them are ship rock I think just so that people have a general idea I mean you can see a lot of pictures on our website and on our um what's our Flickr account Alan um you can oh see a lot of uh theme night images and, and such if you really scroll through the history of our of our facebook pages but peggy if you want to go over next year's um theme night yeah i was like who who on here has participated in a theme night well jeremy we know jen has i know oh i definitely <laughs> <want to. laughs> 
Um, so quick overview for those who may not know what theme nights are. Essentially every night we have a theme. Hey, what do you know? And they, it's just something fun that we can all do together and have a little, you know, little crazy fun with. Um, and the theme nights for us, and I'm going to go in order, will be Saturday. Uh, you are what you drink. So take that as however you would like. Uh, you can be the captain, Mr. Tito, a Greg Goose, or you can do something like some Coke, or some iced tea. Uh, one thing we really want to highlight is that it doesn't have to be alcoholic. <laughs> you can think outside of the box for a lot of these things. <laughs> um, the second night for Sunday will be Spellbound, which I think quite a few people were, were pretty excited about this one. Um, it's just an evening of otherworldly magic. So take that as you want. Lots of uh, fun ideas can definitely come out of this um, this particular night. The next one is the Rocking Twenties. Um, so certainly you can get a lot of good things, uh, a lot of great images online that you can think about. Um, I think a lot of other uh, popular um, excitement, I guess maybe, would be for the next one, which would be Tuesday, which is Summer Camp 1984. Get out those short shorts and the headbands and wristbands and have a good time. And the last one would be Stone Age Vacation. As I'm sure most of you guys have seen along our website, the theming is a very Stone Age cave mate, cave um, theme inspired. So certainly um, take what you will. Um, before I turn it over to Jeremy, if he wants to talk a little bit about it, Good tips that I have heard from guests are shop your after Halloween sales. Definitely uh, make sure that you are out and about. You can find some really great things. I know a lot of times people want us to announce the theme nights before Halloween, so you can do that. And then the other thing would be... Hmm. Be creative. Yeah, be creative. There's, there's no right or wrong answer for any of these, right? Well, and I think the other thing to keep in mind is theme nights are optional, but they're fun and they're more fun when you participate. Um, not everybody does. And some people only do one theme night or some do all. Um, there's there's My, no there are people watch. You got to give her something to look yeah. at. <laughs> I like going ramen noodles or Chinese takeout just because, you know, why not? Well, yeah, I, I guess if you drink the ramen noodle beverage, you could do that for, you know, you are what you drink. But no, there's no rules to theme nights. I mean, we... They're fun and the guests, and there's even a whole subculture of theme night people that do theme, anti theme. They do anti themes <laughs> and 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 do their own kind of thing. And and it's a fairly large group. Some people like um, to do the ship formal night too. I see a lot yeah. of people often do like the formal night still, like a traditional cruise thing. Um but just I do want to do a very to. special shout out to Jeremy's wife, Nicole, seen here on my screen today is her birthday. And she so kindly shared this husband with us uh, to represent tonight. So thank you, Nicole. Um, thank and you, then I want to go back to this photo because I know oh. we have a question coming up. Um, this is the loop. This is oh, the yeah. this is the wristbands. This is the giveaways. This is the sh the ship rockers created self merch these wristbands and all kinds of little crocheted i don't even know i don't know that's um, a penis. yeah that's what i thought <laughs> we have some very very original guests that create some really unique exchange gifts and trinkets and so alexis alexis and julie know this and jeremy knows this but for maya's benefit so maya there's a there's an entire trading world that happens on the ship you don't again like theme nights you don't have to do anything but you'll you'll end up coming home with a whole bunch of stuff that other people have created um in in trade with each other throughout the course of the cruise whether they be wristbands or guitar picks or i mean i've seen everything shot glasses so i need a bigger luggage than what i really pack well it just depends on how much you want to take home i was gonna bring a backpack no. or there's stuff that you bring that you don't bring back home with you yeah that's true too i was but, just um, gonna pack a backpack and call it a day <laughs> well you may you may have a few extra things in the backpack at the end depending on how much you decide to take 
but um, they sell luggage in the gift shop and Mexico. Yeah, <laughs> but there's an entire there's an entire trading culture on board too with guests who create these things and and trade with each other, and and again going back to the website for those of you who are new or who have done it in the past there are some rules with regards to trading, and if you look in our terms and conditions which is under FAQ. Um, you'll see that there's a trading section, um, which, which gives all the sort of rules with regards to what you can and can't do with traded items. Um, it's, it's become such a thing. We had to add that to our terms and conditions, um, just so that we don't, you know, it doesn't get too out of control. Um, our recommendations for those who are going to be trading things is not to try to create so many that you end up with a whole bunch that you take home after. I mean, I, I think, you know, trading is fun. But if you walk on the ship with you know 3,000 wristbands, um, you're probably going to end up having to take a lot of them home because you're not going to see everybody. So I mean, I, I think traded items is you know it's one of those moderation in all things kind of deals. Um, you know, a, a few for your friends or a few hundred if you really want to go crazy and start handing them out. We want people to enjoy their cruise. You know, so so we hate for people to have to work to try to hand stuff out during the course of the whole, the whole cruise. We want them to watch shows and enjoy each other's company and, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, <clears throat> Maya, I wanted to add real quick, one of the most, or some of the most coveted stuff as far as the trading that Alan is talking about is from this group called the Swedes and you will find them very yeah. quickly. So brush up on your Swedish because they will make you earn those things. So you have to learn yeah. a little bit of Swedish. Or so eat those are really crazy candy. Again. We think it's, we think it's a fun. Don't eat their candies. Yeah, I mean, again, this is something like loot fish. This it all tastes like loot fish, right? This is something the guests sort of just did on their own, and it organically happened, and uh, and we love it and and uh, encourage it. But again, I mean, you know, we want everybody to have a great time and not have to worry too much about handing things out and not being overwhelmed with with a whole bunch of stuff being given to them all the time either. But uh, but it's fun. It's fun and and. You know, as long as wow. everybody follows the rules and has fun with it, that's great with us. Yeah, hey, uh, see, Julie's got all the wristbands on her. <laughs> that's like a third of my collection. Know, and I've me, seen, I've, I've seen some post crews like beautiful shadow boxes, and like people really make like beautiful memorabilia and wall hangings and all kinds of like uh, hang the string across the ceiling of all the wristbands and. I mean, there's some really great things that people do. Yeah. He's got all his things scheduled. jeremy has got everything there. He's got t-shirts. I, mean, yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Um, hey, Alan, can I ask one more question, Jim, before you go on this? Because it keeps yeah. getting repeated. Um, and we don't know. It's all going to go to everything. The meet and greet. No, like, no clue yet. Or do you have any idea on the meet and greets? In terms of what? Are they happening or what? How they're going to work. How they're oh, work. again, it all, everything sort of depends on how things look. At the time okay i mean we are operating currently as if everything is going to be the same as it's ever been okay. um you know when and if something changes um if for whatever reason meet and greet protocols change or the way we're going to manage meet and greets or or you know the way bands are you know some bands may have a preference or, or you know versus other bands i don't know we're, we're still okay it's we're a long way away from figuring that out but we will absolutely communicate that as well um, okay. so that everybody understands what they're walking into. Jennifer, I hope that answers your question. All right, Miss Kathy, if you wouldn't mind walking people through um, like our FAQ page, as well as like some important terms and conditions things uh, quickly um, in regards to payments, maybe people that book and see this last minute um and don't know how the payments work if we've run out of payment plan times which end in october um just a couple tips and hints um on the reservations end of important things for us that make life easier for both them and us and keep everybody's um expectations in check in other words all the stuff no one reads <laughs> that's impossible. Right, sure no problem jen <laughs> um a few of the first, I'll just go through the frequently asked questions that are on there. Um, one thing is, do I need a passport? Um, basically, if you are a U.S. citizen, um, we highly recommend a passport for everybody. But if you do not have one, you if you're a U.S. citizen, you can sail with a 
an original or certified copy of your birth certificate and a driver's license or a state issued photo ID. Um, if explain, you explain certified copy, Kathy. So the, the um, a certified right. copy, you have to actually get either from the courthouse in the city that you were born, or you can go to a website called VitalCheck, V I T A L C H E K dot com, and get a certified copy. It cannot be a Xerox copy on your home um, printer. Now explain Xerox for the millennials. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Photocopy. You just can't. Photocopy. You just can't make a photocopy of your driver of your uh, birth certificate. <laughs> no, it has to have a certified, it, and it will say it is a certified copy at the top of your birth certificate. Yeah. And it'll be, it'll have a raised seal. Yes, um, or a seal. It doesn't necessarily have to be raised, but it has to have a seal. Oh, see what do I want to. Yeah. Um, some people kind of forgot. Not everybody does that, but you can't have a, a copy. Um, one. But, big but that, if they have a passport. They don't have any problems. Yes. If you have a passport, then you have, you don't need a driver's license. You all you have to do is show your passport and you're fine. Uh, or, one a pa or a passport card. Sorry. Well, a but passport I'm card. Um, you got to be careful with that. The passport card that will allow you to cruise, but it does not allow you to fly internationally. Correct. So if something happens where you are in Mexico and emergency happens and you need to fly home from Mexico, you will not be able to get home if you have a passport card. Yeah. Um, you need a passport. Uh, another big question that we have that comes up is the real ID um, that a lot of states are requiring. And I do believe it's been extended, um, but the real ID is not valid for cruising. Correct. Um, you, it, it allows you to, it makes traveling domestically on a plane um, a little bit easier but it does not get you on the cruise. You still need a passport or an original birth certificate, original certified copy of your birth certificate, yeah. birth certificate and a driver's license. And you're correct. They've extended the real ID now to 2023. So you don't have to have them to fly within the United States yet. But most people I think will have them. I got mine just because my license had to renew, but. Now, if you are not a US citizen, you need a passport. Um, or if you are, um, you can, if you have a green card, you can use that as well. Um, another important question that we get all the time is, um, what does the price include? Um, it includes most of your meals. There's a nice list on our frequently asked questions, um, as well as our, um, what page is it? What's included page right under our pricing tab. Um, it includes all of your meals. It includes most of your beverages, um, non-carbonated beverages such as coffee, tea, juices, fountain, and water. Um, it does not include the alcoholic drink package. Uh, that's a huge question that comes up. Please don't ask it in the group. Um, <laughs> not because we won't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask don't. It on Facebook. Um, it is not our um, policy not to require it. Carnival does not require, does not allow it on charter. So it is not our decision. It is Carnival. And unfortunately, we cannot offer it. You can, however, purchase the bottomless bubbles package, which include, which is, um, which includes so soda, water, and coffees. Yeah, I, I would recommend for anybody who, even if, even if you're, I, the bottomless bubbles is great because if you, for water, sodas, um, it's it's a much better option than than buying a bottle of water throughout the whole course of the cruise and sodas throughout the course of the cruise, especially if you're a not not a drinker. It's a great package to have, but yeah, unfortunately, we we can't offer the the uh, the cheers packages. Um, or, uh, drinkers, we call it bottomless mixers. By right, right. Yeah. bottomless <laughs> mixers. That's a good. That's a good point. Bottomless mixers. I like that. Um, and then of course. Oh. It's it also includes all of the concerts, the meet and greets, and the special events and activities that are on board the cruise. Um, we may have events on and off um, at, at our ports of call, which Alan can talk about. There's usually an additional fee for that, um, depending on where it is. Yeah. We are, uh, as we're going back to Mexico, um, we are in discussions again with, with the fine folks at Plymia 
uh, about a beach party. And so, um, you know, when and if that sorts out, we'll let everybody know, but that, that is an extra fee um, to do okay. that. Party, but I was going to uh, ask about that. Yeah. It's usually not a lot, um, but it includes a lot. I mean, much like on the ship, you're paying for your food and beverages and that sort of thing that the, the price for the Plymia party will include food and some other things too, I believe. What, I don't even remember what, uh, what all did it include? Yeah, food, food, yeah, a lot of booze and food. Beach and wars. Beach wars. All of our activities. Say, not only isn't it unlimited drinks on those beach parties? Yes. Yeah, it's open bar. Yeah. Yes. See, the paying for it alone is worth it. Yes. See, look at Maya. Maya's learning. She, I told you that's why she's here. <laughs> Very much. Yeah. Well, listen, and again, Maya, just in the spirit of honesty, I mean, it, it probably doesn't include every single brand. I'm guessing there's some top shelf stuff. Not the top good. shelf stuff, but yeah. it, they would normally include like, you know, the cheapy stuff. Yeah, yeah. They make some great frozen drinks there that you really want because it's hot and it's. Yeah. It's yeah, really great. Kind of situation, sure. thing like that. Food is good. It's just, it's just an extra thing that we like to do for the guests because they have a facility that can accommodate, you know, a large number of us. Um, a lot of these ports of call don't, um, you know, so that place actually can accommodate a, a, a large number of our guests. And so we do a couple shows and, and have some games and that sort of thing. But um, there's plenty to do in Mexico that's not our party too. So if you want to do other things, that's fine. And some people have done parties some years and, not the others, but you know, some things we'll be... you don't want to do in Mexico, though. What? What's that? I said some things you don't want to do. In oh, Mexico. yeah. So you're better like, off this... going to the party so you don't get yourself in trouble. Well, I think as we go to the party, you're going to get a reminder about going back to the ship. That's that's, right. that's, a, that's a big one because uh, you don't want to forget where you are and what time it is and miss the ship. But um, the uh, the party's fun, yeah. So I mean, I think this time. I don't, I don't know whether we're doing anything Costa Maya or not. I don't think we are. I think it's just Cosmo. But if that changes, we'll let everybody know. If for some reason there's, you know, we decide to do something in, in Costa Maya, we'll let everybody know what that is. But the, the pre-party, typically there's no, well, I guess we have had pre-parties where there's been a cost. When and if we, we get the pre-party details sorted out, we'll let everybody know. But sometimes there might be a cost to the pre-party depending on what we do. Um, so that will be at the Shiprock 102? <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll do we'll do a follow-up junior year but um the uh the only thing that i can think of outside of merch in our party that we would charge for is nothing so i mean i, I think you know merchandise on the ship in in our party in cozumel um and if there is some kind of a cover for the pre-party which usually we try not to not to have um we don't i don't like nickel and diamond people for stuff I think mean, you're, you're paying an awful amount for, for going on a vacation and I, I don't like nickel and diamond people on, on stuff. So then two other points, Kathy, that I think are worth mentioning is what are the odds of me getting VIP? Be real, <laughs> be real about it. Yeah, yeah, Kathy, for Jan, the answer is none. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, um, no, for me, I have my own staff credential. I can go where I want. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you are new, tough. unfortunately, it's none. Um, we have a very long wait list and we have a very limited, small amount of, of uh, VIP packages available. Um, we don't have any suites. Um, even after the lineup cancellation, um, we've had uh, pretty much zero cancellations, so it's. I know. Yeah, I Sorry, guys. <laughs> but I, will, um, I will listen. I'll address VIP because it's one of the mm -hmm. things that comes up to me every year. We have a we do have a very limited number of VIP guests. Um, it's something that that a lot of people in in the rock world and the hard rock world experience um, in you know whether it be festivals or tours or whatever. Um, so we have that. Um, there have been years where I've thought about getting rid of it, but, um, but it's something that we do offer and, and it is very limited. Um, and as much as I wish we could offer it to everybody, we can't. My feeling is that everybody on the, on the ship is VIP. Because I mean, at the end of the day, the, the cruise is such, this, this cruise and this, uh, this event is such a unique experience that you're not gonna get anywhere else. Um, 
you know, so you're, you're going to feel like a VIP, whether you are a VIP or not. Um, we love our VIP guests. Don't get me wrong. Um, but there, there's not a lot of them, um, you know, in, in, um, the, because of that, the wait list is huge. And the reality is, if you know, and, and the reality is that most people that have VIP are multi-year guests or in a room with a multi-year guest. I mean, that's, that's kind of the way it works. And, and in my mind, if you're going to be, if you're going to be a VIP, if you're, you know, six year and you have the option to get VIP, good. Your loyal guests, happy to offer it. Uh, Seasonal you know, staff, Greg Gura would also like to comment and add that VIP is usually a part of an auction item. So if yes. you go to the live auction, charity auction for Cancer Sucks on board, donate your hard earned dollars to a good cause. There's usually VIP attached yep. to a couple items for the following year. Yep. We have a great charity auction with our, our partners at Cancer Sucks and they, we always have a great either a suite or, or some kind of VIP package that, that's thrown in there. Or you can win the raffle like Miss Julie Finch. Yeah, there you go, raffle. That was the next point. <laughs> oh, is the question, are we going to have a captain's raffle? Captain's raffle. Well, oh, the, breeze, the Breeze does not have a captain's suite, uh, much like our prior ships have had. Um, so we're, we're working on something. Uh, to do a captain's, uh, what we've done in the past number of years is there was a suite on our ship called the, uh, I don't remember what it was called. Was it called the captain's suite? Captain captain? Suite. I think it was actually called the captain's suite. Yeah. So we, we <laughs> up the, uh, the captain's suite and a few other things. So we're, we're working on something um, that we'll offer up, but um, there's not that particular suite on this ship. Um, but we'll, uh, we will, uh, we'll do something similar to that. That'll probably include the um, the whatever it is, the condo at Plymia and yeah. um, some other things that we'll throw. Which in had there. like premium drinks and food yeah. and like eleven people up there. It was it was a really cool suite that was up there for Plymia. Cool yeah, uh, we'll, Julie, we'll though, do you want to share your past captain's raffle win and Roger. how you became Captain Julie? I think you won that your first year, didn't you? Yeah. Your new year you won that it was ridiculous my best friend kept telling me i think you're gonna win i think you're gonna win i'm like you're you're high i don't even know what you're talking about so uh we had three adults and one minor in our cabin we booked on deck two uh, i got an email from alan after we all all the adults put in five ticket five ten dollar raffle tickets <clears throat> Um, I got an email from Alan about a week, maybe a week and a half before he's like, he won. I'm like, I sent my roommates this <laughs> copy of the email. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> I said I won, but like, seriously? <laughs> They're like, yeah. Really you win. So, um, we ended up, God, it was insane. We ended up out Ollie Herbert from All That Remains. He ended up staying in my apartment because he was a little further away from the port than he'd anticipated and we helped him with transportation. Um, man, my world got turned upside down. We just had rock stars around us constantly. When we got to the cabana, which I won the Grand Cabana at what, Half Moon K, yep. most of the stowaways came all of their tooth, most of Black Label, Star Set. I mean, it was, I mean, I took major advantage of the prize, and I'm sorry. I'm, you might have gotten in trouble, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was ridiculous. Awesome. Hey, Jan, I just, Jan, I just texted you a picture of last year's, uh, last year's Captain Sweet winner. I don't know if you want to show that to everybody. It was from the from the condo at Plymia. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Yep, that's in the condo yeah. um, that we'll have again this year. So Julie got upgraded to the captain suite. She got to eat in the artist dining room every night. She was on yeah. the guest list for there. Um, you got the cabana half moon. So then you also got upgraded to platinum VIP because you were in a suite. It was really good. 
And she yeah. wore that hat everywhere. Yeah. She, like, <laughs> we'll we'll come up with something. Like I said, they don't, the, the suite doesn't exist, but we'll we'll figure something out for some kind of a raffle again this year. Awesome. No matter what it is, I'm sure you will make it absolutely epical. When uh, will the course. raffle start? Huh? When will the raffle start? Well, we got to figure it out first. <laughs> it'll be, we'll, we'll figure out something here in fairly short order, but it'll all sort out before the end of the year. We I usually guess. start selling the tickets when we sell the pre-party packages mm -hmm. or the beach package a few months out, two to three months before the cruise will. Sometime later in the fall, we'll, we'll have details and, and uh, we'll announce the, what's included in the raffle. Can I just say, no matter what, it'll blow your freaking brains out, dude. <laughs> Just being on the ship will blow your brains out, though, even if you don't You're win. You're not wrong. But people really do win. It's amazing. And then um, that brings us to our next segment, which is connectivity and um, communications with us. Um, I think it's really important that people remember that what's always in the family forum isn't an official comment or post from us. Um, that's a lot of other ship rockers adding in their commentary, their opinions, their feelings, sharing articles, sharing shows. That's a place for you all to connect and gather and, and commune. Um, just remember to be sure to follow the actual ship rock cruise page on Facebook, Instagram. Um, we will always post along with emailing our booked and unbooked guests, any major announcements that we have any changes or um, anything that's official will come from us and be posted to those groups as well. Just make sure you're getting your accurate information and not formulating, you know, um, opinions and, and, and reciting things that aren't coming directly from us is just like a favor I would ask, because we do see that a lot and we have to do a lot of cleanup and maintenance of making sure that incorrect information isn't being handed down, especially, you know, through COVID and everything, it's been, um, challenging to say the least about just maintaining um, things that are opinions versus like actual facts and information that we've um, disseminated. So make sure you follow us on the actual things um, at pages and then, and Heather will post some links there. There is a lot of groups um, that you can be a part of through Facebook if you're not, you know, sorry if you're not on Facebook, but that's like the reality of where a lot of things live for us. Um, you have your actual Shiprock homepage, Get Shiprock. You have the family forum. You have the Cavemate search page, which is great for if you want to go and you want to be introduced to someone to share a cave with. Um, Jeff Angler typically moderates that page. He's a wonderful resource for us there for matching like-minded, fun people um, with similar interests, similar timing of what they want to be doing up late, not up late. He'll help guide you and navigate you with the other people in that group to find the right person to room with. We so should, don't feel like you have to go alone. We should clarify caves. Caves are cabins. We're, we're talking in themes. <laughs> <laughs> For our Stone Age uh, yeah. thing. So we have a Stone Age theme this year. So we, we decided to call our cabins caves. So if you hear Jen say cave, it means cabin. We started in COVID a ship docked series. We've been doing bingos and trivias and all kinds of crazy things. Um, in that, we started our podcast, Making Waves. If you haven't subscribed, you should. Uh, Justin, who's here with us tonight, is one of our hosts of that every week and does a fantastic job of interviewing really relevant people that we have on the cruise from artists to our talent booker, Roger. We have a lot of really great guests coming up um, that are part of our forthcoming lineup. Um, but what really was special that happened this last year was that our guests decided on their own to start congregating and getting together and seeing their family, the people that they consider to be their family. And they created the Ship Rockers events page. Um, so on there, you'll find events listed for all the different festivals coming up. Um, different gatherings on weekends. You have Aaron Clement's birthday party coming up the end of July. He's doing a big beach party in Virginia that we want to help him, you know, get the word out on. He's been posting and selling tickets to that. Um, there's a lot of events that are happening that you guys yeah, can David, get out. David Franz has a big, a big boat weekend. In yeah. Chattanooga. Yeah. David's been fundamental. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible what the community, again, 
Valerie took a group to Mexico. I mean, there's yeah, been like a lot of really amazing. It's amazing what together. this community has has become over the you know the 13 years or 12 years. Oh, there you go. And, and then Ask out. For sends us these <laughs> for yeah. for kicking ass and having fun. I it's, mean, it's it's amazing the community of guests that we have. I mean, it, it and as much as we want to take credit for it, it really we we try to nurture it and we try we try to love it. But uh, the, the community of guests have become this incredible living, breathing or, you know, being and, um, you know, to put together the events that they put together over the course of last year. Why, uh, Jeremy, that's why we created those patches. I mean, we, we wanted to we wanted to show some love for our community of, of people who are, are on their own, you know, creating all these get togethers and and, uh, and and having fun together as a family. And so we want to honor that. And, uh, Can I say how much I really truly appreciated that you did that in your own free will, and that was yeah. incredibly generous. You guys, that was that was hey, really beautiful to it's me. It's the least we could do, Julie. I mean, at the end of the day, you we want to be there, but <laughs> yeah, I, w- I wish we could be at every one. But I mean, the reality is, is you yeah. guys have you guys have built this this cruise. I mean, you know, we we I I make a joke that I rent a boat and I throw a booze cruise. <laughs> every year but the, but it wouldn't be what it is and what it's become uh over the over the years that we've done it without all of the incredible community guests that we have and and the, you can i mean the spirit of the theme nights and the anti-theme nights and the events that you're doing over the course of the last year because we weren't able to have a cruise and it's it's amazing and maya you'll see i mean you'll 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 see when you get on board there's a really incredible group of people who uh who who love this event and love each other and and uh, it, it, you know, thankfully, it it affords us the ability to keep doing it. I mean, that's you know, we we if we're not for you guys buying tickets, we couldn't do it every year. But uh, the reality is, is that the the community of guests is is what keeps this thing afloat, and uh, and it really has been an, an incredibly humbling experience for us. And and we respect that, and we want to make sure that what we do every year um, only makes it better, and and only makes it more enjoyable and rewarding for you guys yeah there's it's, not cheap, it's not cheap to go on these things either we understand that i mean it's it's expensive and there's probably a lot of people who shouldn't be going every year who do and uh and the reality is is we 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 totally respect that and understand it and and that's one of the reasons why we work so hard in lineup and that's one of the reasons why we really pay attention to the surveys um all the good and the bad the criticisms and the praises and uh and you know i I, I say in my, I have a and a on the ship every year uh, called Captain's Quarters. And, and it's, it's always interesting because I welcome the negative. I, I, I welcome the, the questions of, you know, well, why can't it be this way? Or we think it should be done that way. Because a lot of the times people are afraid to say, you know, they're afraid to speak up and, and say what they don't like. I know what they like, it works. You know, we, 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 we fine tune it every year. <laughs> to try to make, you know, make it to where there's nothing that anyone dislikes. But at the end of the day, if, if there's something that people have a problem with or don't understand or, you know, want to change or have a better idea than we have, um, you know, we try to do everything we can to make it as enjoyable an experience as we can for all of our guests. Yeah, there's a great link, I think, that um, hopefully Heather posted. If you go to our website and go to contact, uh, underneath there, there's a link called Guest Community, and you'll see all of the different links to different yeah. chapters of state groups. If you live in a state or um, you have common interests, uh, but definitely a really great community source to pop on there and see if any of them. And we try to keep that updated. I mean, at the end of the day, if there's a if there's a state chapter or a group that's missing, you know, send us the information and we'll add it. Back to Jen's point on Facebook. Facebook is the worst way to try to achieve customer service. I mean, as much as we try um, to stay in the group and, and be active in the group to try to answer questions, not everybody reads full comment threads. Someone will ask a question, a question will get answered. And then literally two comments later, someone will ask the same question. So it's, it's a very challenging way to try to communicate with our community of guests and, and do real good customer service um, the reality is we will be in there as much as we can to try to, to try to answer questions, but the best way to have your questions answered 
is to send us an email or go to our website and send us an email through the contact page um, or live chat or call. Um, you know, we, we have our team of people uh, available for that and, and we have the correct answers. Um, in any event, we don't, we'll find them. But the, the Facebook groups are great. You'll hear from a lot of other guests who will answer questions and we welcome that. We, it helps us obviously to have guests who know the answers to certain questions and can answer those questions for us. But um, a lot of times, like Jen said, it gets challenging because sometimes misinformation um, will spread um, and, and create a little bit of confusion. So the reality is if you're, if you're a, new, a first time guest uh, and you can't get a question answered, um, contact us. We're always, we're, we're happy to talk to you, respond to your emails, live chat, um, anything we can to do to make your vacation less stressful and more enjoyable. I'm opinionated, so I'd ask. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, see, my, and Maya, Maya's here because she did exactly that. I mean, she's, she, you know, she's inquisitive and, and, uh, and was able to reach out and, and ask Jen a bunch of questions. And so here you are. No, I think I only ask questions every that. time I'm paid. <laughs> huh? but one of the questions you did have was interesting about Galveston and the hotel. She's like, I found a cheaper place farther down the island, or do I get the more expensive place right there in town? And I yeah. was like, I guess it depends on what you're going to do and what's important to you, you know, but um, I think you made your decision anyways. And I think you made the right one. Maya. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to get Uber and then try to get find a ride there versus walking. Yeah. Um, also, so the reason I asked Alexis to come on tonight is because Alexis for months, maybe years, I'm not sure, has been posting Zoom links and hosting her own shiprocked rooms and meetups and conversations and things. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and her and her efforts to keep people connected and um, informed and knowing each other. So thank you, Alexis. Is there any that you have coming up that you want to share with us? I have not scheduled one yet, um, but I know it, you know, we, we try and do it just to at least keep in touch with people that we don't necessarily get to see all the time. Um, whether it's us going to Hilton Head in March for St. Patty's Day that Renee put together or, you know, damn camping that's coming up. Um, Woo! Just, <laughs> or just people, you know, that don't get to see each other, people on the other side of the world. Um, we have a lot of people that come from Australia and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it, I don't know, definitely, I will post it. I'll give you like a week ahead of time. Um, everyone is welcome. If you're a noob or a survivor, if you're a noob and you have questions, come crash. We will answer whatever you need to know, um, especially if you can't get in touch with somebody for a mask for right away or if you just want to know the vibe or, you know. When is damn camping this year? Walking around in a man thong entirely possible you never know oh, jeremy comes back what no pants on, <laughs> pants on. <laughs> august 26th through august 31st yeah. oh, okay I'm, i may make an appearance at dance camping this year we'll see. do it somebody on the phone today requested it <laughs> requested what that i be at damn camping yeah that we show up yes. Oh. <laughs> yes i may so you said what is it Julie? August August 26th to the 31st. I mean, you got that camper. You better go to the damn camping. No. I do. I, have <laughs> I a, took a camper and it was gorgeous. There's, there's spots there's, available, Alan. You have so there's much room RV for spots? floor sleep in there. I'll have to check with David on that, but I think so. Well, I'll, che I'll check with David, but all right. Dude, we'll make room for so you. Alexis That's has the bottom line. Uh, Alexis says the survivor, what, what is your, what is you, what do you think your number one piece of advice for first time guests is? Take it all in stride. Don't try and do everything your first year and stress yourself out because you won't enjoy it because you're like, I have to be over here because this person's playing or I have to be over here because this is going on. Just go with the flow. Just, and don't overpack. I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute, but leave room in your suitcase. I was going to ask that. I was like, are you guys going to post up like at least a basic list of what needs to bring? Because I'm one of those people that I will pack maybe 15 minutes before I leave. I have several <laughs> items here to show that are essential pack items. Um, and I hope you all brought yours too, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Hey, um, Maya. 
Maya. Yes. David Lee Roth, back in the glory days of Van Halen, used to get on the tour bus when I pulled up to his house, beginning of a tour with just a toothbrush, and he collect things along the way. So if you have that mentality, you'll be fine. Nice. Yeah. We do have a rule, though. Wash your ass. Wash your ass. <laughs> Wash your ass. You Wash your ass. ass. And wash your hands. Yes. Most importantly, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, gonna go to so Maya. Uh, hang on, real quick. Are we going to to packing? I mean, we might as well. We're not here. yet. We're going to okay. um, the questions that were submitted that I feel like a lot have kind of been answered. So I'm just gonna roll through those. Too. Um, we discussed trinkets. We discussed vaccinations. Uh, smoking allowed on sweet balconies. The answer for that is absolutely not. You will get fined. Carnival has a very strict yeah. um, smoking policy. No smoking is allowed on any balconies, period. Correct. Correct. Um, only in the designated marked labeled areas of the ship. So no, you will not. You will. They can remove you from the ship was their last policy that they had. Um, if you are caught smoking. Well, and if you're smoking on your balcony, they can fine you. Right. That's a, that's a ship fine. That's not us. I mean, at the end of the day, right. you know, we, we, we have to follow Carnival's guidelines uh, on health and safety every step of the way, and that includes smoking. So no smoking on your balconies, um, smoking in designated areas only. Um, there are a lot of designated areas. So if you need to smoke, you can, you can find a place. That I'm pretty sure someone's asked to about alcohol. If they're allowed to bring any on, <laughs> uh, one yeah. bottle of wine per person. Yeah, there is a there is a there is a, there is a uh, uh, if you get if you go to our website um, and under top is it under top questions? Yeah, under top questions on our FAQ, um, you can find the answer to that. But you can bring uh, you are prohibited from bringing alcoholic beverages except at the beginning of the cruise during embarkation, you can bring one bottle of sealed unopened wine or champagne per person in your carry-on luggage. Um, all other liquor, beer, or forms of alcoholic or non-alcoholic beverages outside of the exemption are strictly prohibited. Um, you can also purchase uh, prior to the cruise uh, bottles of liquor, um, and I think wine and champagne too, that can be delivered to your cabin. And beer. I think water. Yeah, I mean, there's you can buy once you're on board, you can buy everything. But the I, I believe you are all are are able to pre-purchase um, bottles for your cabin at the beginning of the cruise. What happens yeah. if you have like medical grade water? Like for um, if you have health related anything, whether it be medicines or water or whatever, um, reach out to us. Um, either call us or email us. Kathy and Peggy can get answers to all of those questions. Because a lot of that stuff, it, 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 it varies by person. So, I mean, if you have any kind of medical water or medical um, medicine or um, other types of, of things that you require, um, we can get all of those questions answered for you, right, Kathy? Right, and what we'll do is um, take the information that you have and then put you in touch with the guest access department. Carnival has a wonderful uh, department that will handle all of that with you personally. So they'll make sure that you have everything you need. And we do need that information at least 30 days prior to sailing, if not sooner. Yep. Speaking of Carnival, we did have a question about the VIFP number. Um, yes, our cruise will count towards your Carnival status. You will receive your Carnival booking number about a month prior to sailing. Um, where you can then book your onboard excursions, the drinks to the room, anything that happens on board, your spa packages, shore excursions, all of that will come once you can have that Carnival booking number. And it would then link to your Carnival VIFP account um, and count towards your... There are some things, however, because we are a charter cruise, which are not applicable. Um, to be right. like, there's no, obviously if you're diamond, there's no diamond cocktail party or Correct. that sort of thing. But, um, the, but most of the VIP F benefits, um, are, uh, honored and, um, you will get credit for the sailing. Definitely. Um, we have a question from guests in Canada that have been holding off on booking due to COVID and whether they're going to be allowed back in um cancellation policy that kind of thing and our standard line for that has been um that we're in the non-refundable period now 
Um, and if the cruise lines determine that we are sailing, then we are sailing. So um, if you wanna wait until an appropriate time to book when it is more comfortable and restrictions have been lifted and it's easier to travel, which it looks like that's all happening, um, you know, wait to wait to book. We do still have cabins available. We always have flexibility. Um, we have the wait list once we do sell out. Um, there's been very few times that we've really left anyone behind that wanted a cabin. It may be very last minute, but we try to make it work for everyone. So. I, I said earlier, I didn't want to guess, but I'm going to guess that by the time we sail in January, most of the travel restrictions from other countries will have been lifted. Right. Um, so I, I don't think that there will be any problems getting into the United States from Canada. But I've been wrong. Um, hopefully I'm not. But I, I think that at the end of the day, um, you know, you should be able to travel to the U.S. from Canada here in fairly short order. Um, for some of those noobs out there, how many uh, countries do we usually have represented on Shiprock, Alan? Well, it depends on the year. Good question. Um, but that is a good question. I will say, uh, people love the stats. I love the stats. Because it's awesome. I love the stats. I love the stats. Hey, the stats are great. The I the stats great. screen. I would just watch it as I fell asleep every night. It was awesome. Or when you're standing in line at the merch stand. That's it, too. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, well, yeah. We have somebody from why the can't I get into the uh oh man Mark has locked me out Kathy. it looks like we have six we currently for this cruise have people from six different countries oh uh, there's more than that but if I look back that's for only this year Alan if I look back we have you know what though for this year it might be uh that might be we have at least nine yeah about Australia United Kingdom yeah Canada. We have a large contingent of the Swedes. I mean, Europe. the Swedes bring it. A lot of people from UK, a lot of Canadians. Italy. Yep. Which is awesome. So uh, Alexis, did you have, did you come up with any questions that haven't been covered or answered tonight? That's okay, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do have a couple pro tips. Um, don't get super drunk and forget everything because you're going to regret that. Yeah. Well, you already violated that. She said questions, not pro tips. <laughs> <laughs> That's my eye. Reading of the email. She's, me she's not drunk. It's, it's Armageddon. I don't want to be corrected. Stop it. <laughs> I also would like to say wear comfortable shoes because yeah. you, you will walk. Sunscreen. Sunscreen, comfortable shoes. Yeah, bring don't. it. Don't be dumb. I live in Florida. Fun. I'm tan. I get it. Don't be stupid. Always bring sunscreen. Raven and I was like, oh, we don't have any. I'm like, oh, come here. Let me lather you up. You have it just to cover your tattoo. You little UK guys. Come on. Figure it out. I love you. Should this don't. just lead into our what to pack segment? Yes. Yeah, before, we, before we get to the wood pack, shoes, I will, sunscreen. Before we get to wood pack, I will I will say that the comfortable shoes is a is a good call because yes. uh, we've had guests uh, in the past who have lost their shoes in ports of call and have had to walk barefoot and ended up back on the ship with bloody feet. Mm, uh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> So, you know, comfortable shoes for, I won't name names, but he's a long time guest who, who one time got back on the ship with really mangled feet and I felt terrible for him. But um, comfortable shoes is good. Sunscreen's good. Water, 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 water. I mean, I don't care if you're drinking or not, water. And, and it's super easy to get around the ship. It's free. And, um, you know, the more you stay hydrated, the better off you are. One thing I've learned, having done this as number, a number of years as I have, your feet will get swollen. And, you know, just because, you know, whether it's salty food or you're drinking too much, yes. or whatever, you know, the water, 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 the more water you have, the better. And you can order water to your cabin for next to nothing prior to the cruise. You can get lots of water delivered to your cabin and I would highly recommend that. We do that for all of our staff um, to make sure that we have plenty of water in our cabins because that staying hydrated um, is super important. And it, it really just helps overall with your, your well-being throughout the course of the cruise. 
but may uh, I add? Yeah. Um, Pedialyte is a popular item for people to bring. Yeah, Pedialyte's a good one too. And any kind of those um, hydration amplifiers that are brilliant and it will save your life and just do it. Even they have the Pedialyte powders you can mix into the water. Yep. Yes, ma'am. All that. All everything above. Just Jen, do look at Jen has them already. She just does them anyway. <laughs> Just bring it, you won't regret it, I promise. Okay. Well, let me, before we go to more packing things, Jeremy, was there any other questions that you had? Questions? Uh, not really, I'm fairly experienced on this thing. Um, got it figured out, but I will well, say- what, uh, If you had one thing you had to, you had to uh, offer as a pro, what would you say? As a noob, I will say it is, is somewhat overwhelming your first time. Uh, like Alexis said, soak it up. Um, people talk to me about costumes and stuff. I didn't start that until I came on Shiprock. Um, I didn't find a passion for certain things until I came on Shiprock. Um, I didn't, I didn't go and do all these events and things until I met this family. So what I will say is introduce yourself to everyone, um, meet as many people as you can and just have a kick-ass time because that's all this is, is just a, a, a kick-ass time in you will find people in all walks of life, um, from doctors, attorneys, financial advisors, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to people that, you know, work in fast. I mean, it, it's all walks of life, but we're all there for the same thing. And, and that's just what's most amazing about, about this whole experience is it doesn't matter what, where you come from, what country you're from, what you do for a living, none of that shit matters. It's just that we have a love for music. We have a great time together. We party our asses off. Be, be cognizant of that and pace yourself. Because as everybody says, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. But actually, it's really a sprint for five freaking straight days. So you still have to kind of pace yourself. But I, I just, just have a kick-ass time. And um, you're, you're going to, I mean, as long as you don't stay in your cabin the whole time, you're going to have a good time. It doesn't matter what you do. Don't worry about missing out everything on, you know, this band, that band, whatever people make their little schedules and then they abandon them when they get on board. I mean, you just kind of need to go with the flow because yeah. you're going to have a great time no matter who you see, what you see. So that's kind of my advice. I will say Jeremy, Jeremy hit a couple of things that I've of the 12 years of doing this have heard every year. One is pace yourself. Um, it is a marathon, even though it's a five day sprint. Um, you know, you, re you really have to, you can plan, 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 um, but your plans will be out the window the first day. I've heard that a lot too. Um, you know, go with the flow. Um, don't expect to do everything because you don't have to. Um, remember to eat. Remember yeah, to that's one too. Remember Pro to tip. Eat. <laughs> and there's Remember other options other than the buffet yeah i mean there's lots of options i mean the reality is there's so many dining options you don't have to eat on the run and you can go to the dining room every night you can go to the buffet you can go to the steakhouse there's sushi there's fish there's or seafood rather there's i mean if you want to go crazy there's pizza but um there are lots of dining options on the ship and, and we do try to create a schedule in such a way that leaves some windows of time for, for you to, to sit and eat. Um, what is that, Jeremy? Aspirin. Oh yeah, aspirin. Aspirin. <laughs> I was gonna say but, beach um, too. Yeah. Band -Aids. But uh, you know, the, the eat, remember to eat, drink lots of water. Um, you know, if you, and, and a lot of this we're saying if you're drinking, if you're not drinking, you know, still, well, okay, Dram, I mean, here you go. Yes, ma'am. Liquid Death, one of our sponsors this year. We're very excited to have Liquid Death joining us. Nice. Dram, I mean. But uh, the, uh, the eating, drinking, lots of water, remembering to eat. Um, a lot of people load up on, on emergency before they leave. Um, you know, any kind, of, any kind of vitamin regimen before you get on the ship. Oh, um, C-band for people who get motion sickness. Yep, C-bands. I think they sell C-bands in the gift shop, don't yeah. they? Sometimes they don't. They sell out quick. Yeah, we'll emergency. Look we'll at Jen came prepared. Do you have a C-band, Jen? No, because I don't get seasick. Oh. But I will say, if you are legitimately somebody, Dramamine will make you tired. So you got to be careful with that. 
Um, like our coworker, Heather, gets the medicated patches. They're expensive, but you get them from your doctor. They're good for three days. You put them on the day before we leave. They work. You won't have a problem. They work. Jacoby from Papa Roach uses. They the work. Pack. And they yeah. work. They work. We'll also say these are really great. Too. They taste yes. horrible. But they work. Nope. <laughs> in the dark. Was, that, was that Costco brand? Kirkland? Hell yeah. <laughs> Energy shots. <laughs> Kirkland. Shot in the dark. Just get some on bulk. I mean, Justin, the, was there... look, the reality is you're going on a five day cruise. You're going to be amped up. And I, I will say this. We've, we've had people get sick after the cruise every year, especially this last year. Who knows if it was COVID? Who knows if it was typical ship rocked post cruise funk? What I've found is that, and I think my, this may be true of a lot of my staff too. We crash hard after a cruise. And it's, it's your body crashing. It's not necessarily that you picked up anything on the ship. You are amped up. Your adrenaline is high for five days. You're not drinking enough. You're not eating enough. And your immune system gets hit pretty hard over the course of the five days. So a lot of times when you come home and you crash, your body crashes too. And, and that's one thing we've, I discovered. I, I have, we, we call it the post-cruise funk. And, uh, and usually it's not something you picked up on the ship. Usually it's something that's just natural because your body is literally crashing at the end of this five days of being just energetic and adrenaline and everything else. So it's important that you take care of yourself during the course of the cruise, whether it's with emergency or water or food or a leave or Advil or whatever it is you may want to take. I mean, it, you know, take care of yourself. Dramamine. Dramamine. Take care of yourself during the course of the cruise. Wash your hands. I mean, there's there's lots of things that you can do to prepare for and get through these five days of, of fun. Um, you know, I've known there's more people that get off the ship every year, don't get sick than do. You know, un unfortunately, social media is one of those worlds where you only hear the negative and you don't hear the positive a lot of the times. But, um, you know, I mean, if you do take care of yourself prior to the cruise and on board the ship, you'll get off healthy and fine and everything will be great. You may be tired. You know, I mean, that's the other thing. If you're staying up late, if you're drinking, if you're, if you're not getting enough sleep, you know, your body's going to react accordingly. So, I mean, I think, I think the important thing is to take care of yourself, pace yourself, you know, eat well, drink plenty of water and, uh, and, and you'll have a great time. All right. So Justin, was there any questions that came through comments that we missed in covering? No, any no we pretty much touched upon it. Plus a lot of people are, are answering questions that are being posed. I like love that in our coming. community. Yeah. So uh, two things. Um, if you guys want, remember when we have yoga in the mornings, come to that helps get the toxins out of your body. It's a great morning. Get out. It's a great group of people. We do that on a sports court. We'll kind of figure that out this year and you get to watch uh, justin bend and stretch yes oh a sport. that's a sport in itself <laughs> so yeah so come and check that out because you can get all I this stuff that out loud. feel good and also if we're, people are going to start throwing around medications make sure to either take a green powder with you or an apple cider vinegar gummy because your immune system is going to get beat the crap so make sure and take those things at least you know you start off your day well it might go off a cliff the rest of the day, but at least your immune system to start with, start off with is good. So there we go. I was going to say, don't forget um, for everybody to have a buddy system, I would say just in case, you know, you make sure you get back on the boat between the ports and, you know, make sure you find your room at night. Yeah. Maya, mm -hmm. what you'll find is a lot of people actually create uh, images for their phones. <laughs> which, I mean, I'm not kidding. So people will create a home screen like a lock screen. Their lock screen, screen with they their turn cabin into number, their cabin number. Or you know they'll have a phone number or a roommate name or something. So yeah, buddy system is a good idea, whether it's a roommate or a friend or whoever, um, because that's you, you'll find people around the cruise uh, on on this cruise in particular are really great uh, with each other. And so, I mean, I, you know, like I said, I, I, I've, I've been amazed at all the various things that people come up with, whether it's t-shirt or phone lock screens or whatever, so that they know, you know, where they're supposed to be, who they're supposed to be with, if they drink too much, if they're hey, sober, Alan, it's not a problem. <laughs> but one of the questions asked too is by Gene, if you want to know if there were going to be AA meetings on board. Yes. There are friends of Bill 
meetings okay. on board the ship, uh, I believe daily. We uh, have a lot of sober ship rockers, yeah, a lot, a and a lot of sober, of sober artists. We may be talking a lot about the drinking pipe, but there's plenty of sober guests. Correct. Um, there are friends of Bill's and, uh, meetings every day, I believe. Um, but they'll be in our schedules when we get on the ship, they'll be in the schedule. So you can absolutely attend, attend groups. Of course, you're welcome to host your own, but the, the, um, the friends of bill meetings happen every day. There was also something about door decorations, which falls into the shippy category. Yeah. So we have like tattoos, sunburns, costumes, theme night, um, door decorations are a lot of fun. A lot of people put like whiteboards up. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Look at that. Love it. We do. We do allow door decorations. There are some rules, um, and those also can be on our page. Leave on our website. Right? They are. Yeah. Do you guys have like so, pictures of past years so we can get an idea? Uh, you know what? Go to, our IG, go to our IG page and just scan down. We usually have stuff from every cruise. We'll have. Yeah. Uh, you know what? My, I'll um, I'll get a gallery added to our door decorations page. I'll find some past doors and, and add, them, add them to that. A lot of things oh, yeah. are just really it, fun it with the It doesn't have to be super elaborate. It could be, I mean, it could yeah. be very simple. People just hey, get it. Some people get way into the spirit, just like they do with theme nights. Um, and others, I mean, I will tell you, some of the best door decorations, I think, as a guest are the ones that just put up whiteboards or, you know, plain white contact paper. Because a lot of times the artists will go around and sign them. RJ, the art, yeah. Yeah. The artists and are, Lizzie. Are, Hey, uh, I mean, you'll also your get a lot of dicks hallway. drawn for you. But. Yeah, a lot, a lot of dicks. A lot of dicks. <laughs> of hey, uh, one other thing Leslie had posted, and this is a very smart thing, and I think you'll be sore if you don't watch at least one sunset from the deck. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Or sunrise, if you, if you dare. Way. You might be up for it anyway. Just as long as the sun is kissing the horizon and sun. Sunrise is better pretty... on the balcony. There you go. Well, it depends on which side of the ship you're on. But the, uh, the, yeah, check out a sunset or a sunrise for sure. Cause it's, there's a, on an open ocean with a clear sky, there's nothing like it. And if you see a green flash, then you're that much luckier. All right. So to wrap this up tonight, because I feel like we have reached our limit is the what to pack segment. Yeah. Oh, what I feel like I just watched the departed. We, <laughs> we have, we have some things that people have brought. Jeremy, do you have any suggestions to give us of what to pack? Oh, um, well, one of the things that I see that I have actually never done that I think is very clever and um, depending on how many people are in your room, typically it's either I'm solo or with my wife. So it's not that big a deal. But if you're in like a quad, bring those over the door hanger things uh, like shoe organizer deals to put toiletries and little stuff in. I, I don't have a visual for what the hell that is, but that's like one thing. That is, what? Like a shoe caddy. Yeah. Like a shoe caddy. And you, you know, that's just really handy. Um, I will say, you know, there's not a lot of space uh, for stuff. So you know, pack a little extra room in your suitcase if you want to take trinkets, but, you know, us that do costumes, it, it's like we're bringing on way too much damn luggage in the first place. So just uh, economize space is what I will tell you, but you're never really in your cabin. So even if you pack the thing full, it's not that big a deal as long as you have room to sleep. Trash and, and trash. Yeah, and brush your teeth and shit. Uh, so that's really... I mean, the only tips, and I would just say bring an open mind. If you're, um, if you're thinking that this is going to be a typical festival that you go to uh, on land, it's not. It's, com it's completely different, and it's 2,000% better. So just, I would say, don't bring any prior expectations as a noob. I would say leave your expectations yeah. at the door and just be open to what you're going to experience. That indication, um, that's all I have. Oh, my name is Jeremy and I'm done speaking. Um, yeah. Alexis, what's some of your favorite things to pack and bring? Um, a couple of things that I didn't bring with me. Um, power cords, surge protectors are not allowed on Carnival. So if, and this has happened, if you bring a surge protector on board, it will be confiscated, you will not get it back. Um, 
it has to do with so don't bring an iron or a steamer so you can get a power strip with not the non-surge protector types there's very limited outlets in your rooms bring one um especially if you're charging your phones your cameras non-dslr cameras by the way um things like that that that's thank one you for that thank you for that and thank no drones you. on the deck that happens yeah. when you um sunscreen i'm fair skins redhead you will need this even if you are on the deck oh it won't be that but yes you will especially if you're also going snorkeling or scuba diving or anything in the water you are required to have reef safe sunscreen in mexico that's a huge thing if you're not going to be doing the pre-party these are my favorite hand sanitizer clorox wipes keep them with you wipe down everything the, the cabin people are amazing but still yeah, and I think I think given this last year, there'll be a lot more hand sanitizer stations around the ship too. Yeah. Um, one of the other things, these cruise tags, you get your tag from Carnival. It will come, you print it out, you put it in here. Um, I do not use the little plastic tags that come with them. If you get the cable management Velcro, these will not come off your luggage. If you um, put it on your tags, your when you check in your, your bag check and they deliver your luggage to your room, this is not coming off. So usually by day two, day three, we get a notice, hey, somebody's missing a suitcase. That won't happen. Um, but my biggest thing for you guys are these. So your walls and your, on your room are metal. Mm -hmm. These are magnets. They are hooks. You can put these on your door. You can put them on your wall. You can hang hats, yeah. necklaces, lanyards, anything and everything. These hold up to 20 pounds. You can get these on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I have a ship uh, ship block Amazon list of all the things that you can buy that are great for your room. But these are absolute lifesavers. For people who need to hang things, especially last year, well, year before we went to New Orleans, we had a lot of beads hanging out. Bead. Going <laughs> uh, but these are awesome for basically anything and everything because you don't have a lot of storage. You don't have drawers. Um, these are awesome, especially when Askboard gives you your lanyards and you get your sign and sale cards that you put in your little, your pouch. These are awesome for that too. And it keeps your stuff organized. Yeah. So. I like you. We'll have, we'll have pouches again this year and, and uh, little schedule cards too. Alexis, you rule, by the way, with all these great tips. We should, we, uh, Jen, we should have another one of these a little closer to the cruise and have Alexis come back and just give us her whole Amazon shopping list. We can just go through everybody's <laughs> bags as they're packing. Yeah, we can do a pre cruise Zoom packathon. I'm going to add is if you are sharing a room, don't forget your poopery spray. Nobody yeah. wants to be on the receiving end of that. No. Nope. Okay? This reminds me of RVing. Alexis, Alexis, do you have an RV? Yes. See, very, I knew it. I knew it because I just got one a couple of months ago and I, I have discovered all of the various things that RV people oh. use for, yes. So. I can teach you a few things. I love it. I love it. No comment. No. <laughs> G-rated. G-rated. I mean. We're never G-rated. True. Julie, what do you got in your bags, girl? What are you bringing with you? So definitely anti-nausea. I mean, I, I do get seasick. I do have vertigo. Um, when we went on one of the ex exhibitions, expeditions, whatever. Excursions. I, I was super, super motion sick on the bus and just don't ever freaking your Dramamine, Bonine, Meclizine, whatever. I'm sensitive. Don't tell anyone, even though I've told everyone. But you're sensitive? Motion sickness. <laughs> That's it. That's where I call the line. Shut up, Jeremy. Um, anyway, don't forget your motion sickness. Like, Oh, I just don't tolerate it well. I'm sensitive. Bring band-aids. I mean, just simple first aid. 
I, I always think it's important. I have a medical background. It's just easy. Neosporin, band-aids, whatever. It, it makes you more comfortable. I like to be comfortable. Um, again, comfortable shoes. Don't think you can wear stilettos. You're high off your ass if you think you're going to deal with that for all the shit. You're going to walk eight miles a day. No. Also, <laughs> you will. You will. I have my pedometer. I, I do a ton of steps. Eight miles. You probably have 30. A lot. A lot. A lot. So, Peggy, oh, is God. there something that you must pack that you know everybody needs? Mm, for me, the power strip was definitely my go-to. That's, that's definitely my, you need to have. Um, I would say some sort of jacket or hoodie or sweater or something like that. I'd say Kathy and I are from Florida, so we, we go from heat to air conditioning and air conditioning is always very cold. <laughs> and so um, having, you know, something just to, to have on is nice. Plus I'm sure a lot of people will say when you are up out on deck, it can get chilly out there, even if we're in the middle of the Caribbean um, and beautiful weather, just because you're outside, um, having something that helps keep you a little warm might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Unless you're the Swede and then they walk around and like, crazy or bikini girl yeah or bikini girl absolutely yeah. um, awesome. there are people made for made for cold weather no power yeah. strip is a great idea that's one thing i always try to remember too is power strip and if and we have a lot of guests who like me probably use the cpap the uh you want to you can actually get the um the water from your cabin steward you can also get a an extension cord from your cabin steward if you need one but it's not a terrible idea if you want to to bring your own extension cord because typically the power outlets are on the opposite side of the room from the beds so if, if you need to uh if you need to bring your uh, your cpap you can bring a small you know 10 foot extension cord um but you can get them from cabin stewards and you can actually get the water from cabin stewards if you use a humidifier in your cpap also jeremy's nodding his head so he knows Oh yeah, I had sleep with one, and yep. the fir my first my, my first shiprock was my first cruise, and I took an extension cord, but it was a six footer, so it was very difficult to get my CPAP. So I had to sleep on my bed like yeah. sideways. Uh, get... You need a you need about a ten footer. You need a ten footer. Yep. Yep. Jeremy, uh, your wife, your wife, the birthday girl, also commented that you cannot bring on handcuffs. No. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks. Uh, yeah, our handcuffs got confiscated last year. If you're thinking about it, that was the first time she had been on. We brought them, whatever. Did not go well. Uh, they got confiscated. We never got them back because it was such a royal pain in the ass to get them. Happy birthday again, Nicole. I hope your Netflix and chill tonight is real. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Uh, speaking of prohibited items, we should point out that also in our FAQ uh, on our website is a a list of prohibitive item prohib prohibited items. Our handcuffs on it. Alan. You can and cannot bring. Yeah, I think it's was it curling irons. You can't bring um, steamers. You can bring steamers, actually. Um, it can't be metal ones. Yeah, metal ones. It has to be the all plastic. Yeah, you, can't bring, you can't bring like irons, like clothes irons, um, but you can bring plastic steamers because we've had that. We've had those before. Um, and you can bring curling irons. Am I right? I thought you could bring a flat iron, but not a curling iron. I've brought curling irons. Oh. Yeah, there you go. I think yeah. curling irons are fine. Flat irons, I think, are fine. You can't just have like you can't just have clothes irons like normal no. irons. And illegal I substances. I don't use a hair dryer, but my understanding is the hair dryers that are provided in the cabins are not great. But you can bring your they own. Suck. Hair dryer. Yeah, there you go. So you can bring your own hair dryer. Bring breath mints. That's handy as well. Deodorant is important. Yeah. Yes. Kathy, what's your go-to must-pack item for Shiprock? Um, everybody had really good ideas, but 
one thing that I would like to recommend is that you do not pack valuables in your checked luggage. Um, whether it's medications, do not pack your passport. Um, that happens a lot. And it gets on the ship and you are delayed getting on board the ship because they need to find your luggage to pull your passport out. Um, do not, um, the cabin stewards do a really great job of trying to deliver your luggage to your cabin. Most people get it around 4 or 5 p.m., but sometimes it is delayed. Um, if you have a special outfit for your theme night, carry it on. Um, we've seen so many guests like totally disappointed because they cannot participate in theme nights because their luggage is delayed and their costume that they spent a lot of money on is can't be found. So anything, anything valuable, anything important, anything you need for that day, carry it on. I think, you know what, a good a little ask for aside, team aside here, we should do this again, a little closer to the cruise, especially with regards to packing um, and, and that sort of thing, just as, as sort of a last minute refresher reminder. Um, obviously, Alexis got some killer ideas for stuff to have in your cabin. And um, I, I think it's a be good thing as we get closer to the cruise, we should do again. So, sorry. Justin, what is something other than the couple things you mentioned? Is there anything that we're forgetting that you can offer? No, Kathy said it since luggage takes a little while sometimes to get to your cabin. If you got a backpack, make sure to put one change of clothes in there. It doesn't matter if it's a shorts and t shirt or whatever, just something you want to change out of if you want to do that. That's usually pretty good. Um, other than I think that, in, the, yeah. in the history of the cruise, I, rem I recall only a handful of people in the 12 years that we've done this where their, their luggage has been lost or not loaded or whatever. Um, it's just like the airlines. I mean, at the end of the day, you could your, your luggage could end up in St. Croix for all we know. But um, yeah. they're pretty good. The cruise lines are pretty solid about making sure your luggage gets on board. And it, it does take a minute sometimes to get delivered. But, um, you know, I, I think Justin's recommendation is good. And, and, and absolutely 100% don't put your valuables in your checked luggage. Always in your carry-on. Always, always in your carry-on. Uh, because, uh, you know, if you need access to it the first day, it should be in your carry-on, period. Yeah, question about the carry-on. Is it like the airport regulation for carry-ons? Like you how big of a bag can you bring up? And the reality you. is, my you can carry on as much as you want to carry on, but the um, I mean, if you don't want to be, you're going to be hauling it around with you until your room is ready. So you know, the the lighter the better. But if you've got a backpack and you can fit all your important, you know, whatever is most important or most valuable in your backpack, that's good. If you want to carry a, like a roll around luggage, you can, but typically the rooms aren't ready till you know mid afternoon. So. Um, you know, you, you might be rolling around a bag for a little while, but if you've got a backpack, you're good for a while. Because I was going to do like a backpack duffel bag. Yeah, so fine, totally fine. totally fine. So I have a couple of items that weren't mentioned that I will say from my years of, of cruising. I get hangry and sometimes with our erratic hours or being so on the go and in and out, I'm in my cabin to sleep a few hours or shower after work before trying to go out and hang out. I need snacks, so I always bring like some form of, of filling uh, snack to have just on hand and share, and almost everybody always eats my snacks also. I will second the sunscreen, all of your drink goodies and dietary things. A leave with a bottle of water chugging before you go to bed will save your life the next day. There was somebody that commented in here, gentlemen, plug your ears. Ladies, bring your hygiene products. They are very expensive in the gift shop. Do not flush anything than toilet paper and your business down the suction toilets because it is very embarrassing. They will have to send engineers. It will block the toilets in the entire hallway of all of the cabins. It's a very smelly process to clear them out. Don't flush your business. And for I, those people, I've, I've, with, had to, I've had to call before. I know it's not pleasant. So <laughs> just I don't have female flush. product. I've just had to call before. Do the courtesy <laughs> flush. And if you're an extra toilet paper user, that's fine. But do some flushes in between. Don't plug up the system. Three. For all of you with the extra COVID weight right now, I know this stuff 
saves fires. Thigh butter right there for your what? dresses and your shorts. You can also use it on your feet to prevent blisters. What is that? What is that? To prevent Thigh oh, butter. Can for you put it on your part. testicles? Yes, you can also put it okay. there. All right, it's okay. anti-chafing and it's also anti-blister. Okay, hang on. Where you said chafing. Let me just tell you. There is there's Everybody another male uh, member of our team, fun. and I have had many a discussion about the chafing because it happens. And the gold bond or the uh what's the I have it in I have it in my travel bag now. It goes with me everywhere. Jump um Tenactin? No, not Tenactin. What's it called? Uh preparation eats. No, not no, no, no. hemorrhoids. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> you slash, Listen, you the can find it. Eyes. Can, so there you go. I use it on my feet also if I'm wearing heels or wedges that I know will give me blisters or when I'm walking a lot. I know my sneakers for when we're on the ship, like running our asses off. If you put this on your feet in your blister areas, you won't get them because it's it causes the anti-traction friction. But yeah, for the thighs, yeah. that's the stuff. Also, Jeremy has something band -aid. good. Liquid band-aid, especially if ladies are you wearing heels or if, you know, Jeremy's over there wearing his stilettos like he has done in the past. Your pinky Perfect. toe, your blister. If you don't want blistered, liquid band-aid. Also, fun fact, drunk people, write your room number on your wrist. <laughs> and cover it in liquid band-aid it, it's waterproof it won't come off if drunk please return to room whatever you are you also so just a hannah you are supposed to and realize that you're a responsible adult yes, yes. I mean, or not that is the that is being responsible that uh, is jeremy, jeremy uh, that free i think it's very <laughs> important not even just for men to carry but also ladies we do have a very wide single population on board that likes to enjoy themselves or if you're not you know single I'm, you can still enjoy what, yourself. What, i'm sorry i lost track what are you talking about this is pegging <laughs> sleep sex talk <laughs> oh next yeah. time we'll do demonstrations yeah. people give a cabin fever <laughs> yeah hey jeremy pharmacies carry great things in mexico <laughs> uh, okay all right well that's a Guys, I'm not gonna turn for the worse. This has been real, <laughs> real fun. Real, real. All right, is that are we calling? Are we calling it on that one? I yeah, think, well, Justin, do you have some wraps for the end? Us. Yeah, I do have some wraps. Hey guys, uh, like Alan said, we'll do this again later as we get closer, probably in the fall sometime. We'll do a ship rocks 102. Just a kind of reminder, and we'll kind of go over luggage and other items that come up. We'll have other idea. Uh, I'm sorry, other issues and topics to go over so start thinking about your questions for then um other than that thank you everyone um obviously our survivors and 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 our our new uh maya who now i feel like is just yeah a maya. Like, total yeah. pro, she, she total pro. thank you obviously jen kathy peggy and the captain thanks guys um and then heather somewhere wherever heather is floating in the uh, in the ether doing all this sure. stuff and monitoring the line hey guys just a reminder uh we dropped the aaron jones uh podcast today you can go find that on spotify or itunes amazon music or google podcast and you can also find it on the ask for youtube channel yes we have a youtube channel now so go check it out please subscribe and uh well hell wednesday we're going to do it again uh with andy from the band varsity who will be joining us on the cruise so we're going to get a, a feel for what those guys are about is that a varsity hat no, it's a ship rock app. Okay, well, the, the, we appreciate <laughs> that too. Anyway, so check that out. That'll be uh, we're gonna do a we'll do this on Facebook Live, uh, eight thirty Eastern uh, this Wednesday. So check out Andy from Mars Varsity. Chad will be back and joining us. And Chad, 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 Chad nice, Chad, nice. Chad, Daddy, 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 Daddy will be back with us on Wednesday, and we'll do our usual making waves. So, um, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you, guys. This has been, well. Thank you, Alexis, Julie, Maya, and uh, yep, Jeremy. Go book your cave. <laughs> if you haven't yet, get off the Thank you, everyone go. who hung in there with us. We had a really great audience tonight. You guys were, uh, well, quite vast. So thank you for Ship Rockers helping out other Ship Rockers with their questions, ones we couldn't get to. And uh, we'll keep on doing that.
So thanks yeah, we'll do this again. I, I think these kinds of things yeah. are great, especially right before the cruise to, you know, for people, we have a lot of new guests this year, just like we do every year. And I, I think these will be great for, for people who have never done it before. Yeah. Thanks, Alan. Thanks right. guys for participating Bye. and hanging. Bye guys. Happy birthday Bye. again to Nicole. Bye guys. Bye, everybody. Bye guys. Thanks, Maya. Good night, everyone. Thanks,